Hi everybody! Yes, yeah, so I do like the special effect they put in there—the little frosty, cold fog effect in the title. They say that's what that's what becoming a Patreon gets you—you you know, extra effects. But now, this, sorry about the uh, time zone mess up, people. Uh, yeah, um, I keep forgetting that six, you know, at least twice in the year, our time zones change, and suddenly we're not on GMT, we're on BST, and the same for EDT. It's ET and that, and it just gets confusing sometimes. <laughs> It was all right last time with Mark because, well, he lives in Taunton. He lives two hours away from me, so the time zone wasn't a problem. But uh, sadly, on this one, it's like, right, we're going to do this at 7 o'clock. Oh, wait a minute. GMT. Ah, <laughs> I didn't realize that basically it was still 2 o'clock in uh, Greg's time. So, yeah. yeah, my bad. I know for a fact that BST is what I need to stipulate from now on. So <laughs> I'm glad that some of you can still be uh, around to watch this, even if I might have messed up your even plans a little bit. So, uh, yeah, top 10 games we've cooled on, as suggested by my guest tonight, which is Greg from Solo Playthroughs. Hey, yeah, what's you can up, say hi you? now. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me. It's, been, it's nice to be here, man. That has been good. That's, but uh, in case you're not aware of what Solo Playthroughs is and that, this is where you get your time to basically plug yourself as much as humanly possible. Use your time wisely, is what I say. <laughs> All right, I'll be brief. Uh, I mean, as the uh, the very creative channel suggests, uh, I went really creative with the name here. Um, I do playthroughs of mid to heavyweight games that are all solo or soloable. Uh, lots of Maze Night, Spirit Island. I started as an Arkham channel, uh, Gaia project. I mean, there's probably about 15 games that I kind of cycle through, go back a lot. Uh, some new games, um, you know, I mean, Uprising, I'm kind of learning right now. I'll get that on the channel soon. But yeah, it's just been two and a half years and having some fun with it and watch Luke for a long time before I started my own channel. So it's kind of a little surreal to be here for sure. <laughs> supposed to be plugging your channel, not mine, but fair uh, enough. You know. not gonna, I'm not going to deny the compliment. And let's say we got Arkham, we got, it was a, we got Spirit Island. Too you know, many bones, I mean, Cloud Spire, Space Night Fires 4X. Yeah, man. It's a lot. Well, they can't, well, they can't <laughs> all be good games, but <laughs> I, I have no idea. I've never played Cloud Spire actually. So I'd, I'd, I'd oh, be interested dude. in it. I It'd like be... it more than too many bones. It's really good. It's really good. I'm, I'm fine. I can give too many bones respect. We'll gloss over Mage Knight, but <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I know, man. I know. I, I understand. That's a big miss where our our gaming tastes come together for sure. <laughs> well, Paul Grogan's got your back for that one because that's one of his uh, <laughs> favorites. So we we clash on that. But I can yeah. certainly watch you for like the Arkham ones and anything right. to do with Spirit Island, which is just I don't know. Watching your Spirit Island stuff is a little bit scary though sometimes because. It's one thing like, oh, right, yeah, you're, you're playing one of my favorite games, therefore I'm going to enjoy this. But I'm also the reason, like, yeah, God, I suck at this compared to some people. <laughs> oh, dude. Friends I mean, of I mine, know the feeling. <laughs> well, friends of mine taught me it for like like level high level difficulties now. But even then, you're going higher than they do, and you're just doing it solo and still winning games. It's like, okay, clearly I have much to learn, but I yeah. still enjoy it regardless. But uh, anyways, so yeah, by all means, hashtag support small creators, get on Solo Playthroughs channel and start subscribing to it. <laughs> Check And like I say, I'll be working on playthroughs on this channel once I've got the kit together. We shall see. You know, teaser there. So yeah, top 10 games we've called on. This was your request, wasn't it? Uh, think... Yeah, mention is a possibility. Uh, you know, I don't like going negative all the time, but we'll we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Look, negative is fine. Negative is, I mean, negative <laughs> in a fun way is totally fine. You know, you can't be super positive all the time. But anyway, we're just saying that we've cooled it up. We're not saying that these games are garbage. <laughs> it's, sure. it's, well, I actually said none of mine. I'm saying are garbage. Not about you, but <laughs> uh, I might have one, but. <laughs> All right, I'll be I'll be concerned about that. But nah, with this one, it turned out to be a little bit tricky at first, and then eventually it's like, oh wait, then it's steamrolled, and now I got a bunch of them to pick from. But oh, yeah. the problem I had to deal with was the t it, there's a difference between cooling on a game in the sense that you liked it before, and now you're just like, eh, it's not as good as I remember it, and I haven't played it in ages. 
Right. Because I can Absolutely. say, well, I haven't played Spirit Island in a good four months or so. But then that's not because I don't like Spirit Island. It's because I just haven't had the time to play it. And I can say that about all of the... I mean, Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle-earth is on my table at the moment. I'm going through the last campaign that I got on it. I love the game. I haven't picked it up since, like, what, autumn last year, probably, when I right. bought the expansion in the first place. It's just time. Adult life sucks. You know, we have to deal with it. So I can't say that I've cooled on a game just because time gets in the way or adult requirements or so. But I can say I've cooled on it if it just legitimately has got to the point where, like, you know what, it's going from the collection. I'm selling it. I'm not as fussed if I play it anymore. Right. I'm no, these these are most of these games I've played pretty recently within the last two months. Um, some are, but it's all like, you know, these are games that you used, people used to be like, let's play this, and I'm like, yeah. And now it's like people are like, let's play this, and I'm like, eh, okay. Mm. <laughs> like, so. Exactly. It's the it's that sort of like, eh, whatever. You know, we can we can we do, but now nah, it took me a while to get a few of them together. And then as I thought about it a bit more, it's like, oh yeah, I could do that, that, that. All right, here's a few uh, honorable mentions then, fine. We'll just have to yeah. gloss over those when we get there. But, oh well, I'll be, I'll be curious to see which is the one that you got negative. I mean, don't tease where it is or what it is. I'm going to be interested to <laughs> find that out because that's not just cool, dog. That's like something went seriously wrong. <laughs> you know? yeah, for sure. But we'll go with it. All right, well, let's make a start. Take it away. You know the score. I'm going first. Oh, yeah. So this one <laughs> is cooled on more because of how much I used to absolutely love it to like where it is now, which I still actually really like it. This is is still one of my favorite games. This is not what it used to be, and that's Arkham Horror, the card game for me. But don't start off with waned. like one of my favorite games like that. Dude, Come on, <laughs> it's still one of my favorite. Games. It was number eight, I think, of my last top. 24 whatever the hell that was but that was yeah. my number one game for years i used to love that game so much uh and i still love it like more co-op and i think that's as a true solo player i've just stopped it's not the game it used to be for me so i've definitely come back on it and i think the most recent cycles have just not hit for me the way the early cycles were so i think it's a sense of like it used to be if there was a new arkham product i was buying it 100 percent. and now i'm like i'm probably not even buying the scarlet keys and I know people that still love it, and they have their game groups, and that's great. Um, I think a friend of mine's going to buy it, so I'll probably end up playing it anyway. But my collection is just so huge. I don't feel the need to invest in it anymore. The new Investigator cards are – they just don't do much for me. I feel like either they're redundant or it's like a play style I don't like. Like the whole Mystic thing of pulling 17 tokens, like that's just not my thing. So I just <laughs> – I love my cycle. You can use the I, app. <laughs> I, oh, dude, I could, but like, I just love, I just don't like even the, the just the way that play style feels to me. So like, to me, I, I love Carcosa, Forgotten Age, Dumbwitch. I mean, that's to me, peak Arkham. Innsmouth I thought was really good, but I mean, Circle Undone, Dream Eaters, and, and this Edge of the Earth really were more of a miss for me than a hit. So as a whole, I just found the whole like, the Arkham has done it, what I wanted to do, and I'm happy with where it is, and I'll still always play it. But it's just not the game it used to be for me, for sure. Uh, when did it start uh, going downhill then for you? Uh, I mean, Circle Undone for sure. I, Circle Undone was like so weighted down with rules, and then Dream Eaters, the double campaign and building the two decks, and then Dream Eaters A is like notoriously awful for true solo play, even two handed. It's a brutal, brutal experience. So it Dream Eaters, was, it wasn't easy. I must admit. No, nah, yes, I had man. to. I had to like get through it, kind of fudge it a little. Like, all right, fine, I'm gonna have to yeah. get my way through it. But the thing is, it was a really enjoyable campaign, even if I was getting nightmares <sighs> from playing it. Because let's face it, any campaign that says, yeah. "Right, we're gonna put you in the Arkham universe and it's all about spiders," excuse me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I like this better. Dream Eaters B, I loved. Dream Eaters yeah. A, I just found like one of the things I think they started to do, which I didn't like as a design decision, was I feel like you used to have scenarios, and that was your scenario. And then they started doing this here's like an intro part of this scenario, and then 15, 20 minutes in, you have to reset mm -hmm. everything or like add stuff. I'm like, I didn't mind I was, like, that uh... too much. I like, I like this two part campaign thing though. I like the idea that you could play uh... all eight as normal with two separate things going on, or you right. could play a four parter because it made it easier to play a four parter just to get the game done sure and i liked how it went back and forth with the storyline of it but my god this one gives me nightmares <laughs> it's like 
I'm not going to flick through any more pictures in case we've got any arachnophobits in the chat, but these creatures <laughs> are the least frightening thing that, that appears on screen. I mean, yeah, the, you know, the, the first scenario in this campaign that you do in the doctor's ward is one of the most horrific, like, like dry, like, what's the word, cold sweat games I've ever played. It's, <laughs> it's so bad. And yeah. I'm glad that you got the audio sorted. Sorry, I. I was tweaking his volume, Greg's volume down low because it was loud at my end, but that's because my headset volume was up high, not because his mic was too high. So I've tweaked it and by the sound of it, it's now better. So <laughs> hopefully cool. that's uh, sorting on there. But oh, and I mean, I, I admit it's, yeah, okay. It's not quite at the peak it was, say, after Carcosa, but I still really like it. Um, let me get your focus sorted on your camera there. Yeah, but... yeah I know what's going on. What happened? I was fine. No, I'm not. Well, I'll, I'll leave you to, to, I'll leave you yeah. to tweet that while I talk about my 10. So my 10 is one that has left my collection. And I like a lot of these deduction style games like, you know, Detective Card Game from Portal has, you know, stood in my collection. I still really enjoy that. Uh, the, uh, was it, what's it called? Chronicles of Crime. Still one that I really enjoy. But I did eventually get rid of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, yeah. which worked well as a solo game for sure. You know, it, it's really cool. But the the problem is, is that Detective, I can get done solo in about 60 to 90 minutes a case, if that, you know. Will I succeed? Who knows? But at least I can get it done. Chronicles of Crime is super fast and super easy with that app. Consulting Detective, though, as cool as this reprint was, because I had this version, this is actually the box I had. I don't think I even finished all the cases in it because it was another one of those time things of, so I need to sit down with this. I need to get all this stuff out, work out what I'm doing, and then I've got to scroll through a, a dress book and read a newspaper article in detail. And I'm like, for crying out loud, I mean, it's hard enough to go through that much detail when I'm doing my day job, let alone to do it in this deduction game. And then at the end, all you get for your trouble is, yeah, you succeeded. But by the way, Sherlock is a clairvoyant, you know, arrogant git and decides to tell you that you suck and he's better than you. So it's it's a little bit of a downer. But yeah, it, it just got to the point where time wise, I just could not be bothered to get all this stuff out and go into like insane mode with a deduction game. I felt like Chronicles of Detective is a bit more as high as I need to go. This was, I think, just a step high. Uh, yeah, I, I've never played it. I've kind of been like scared away from it by uh, friends <laughs> who are like some of the 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 details that you need to catch to actually solve a case are just so mm. like insanely obscure, like that you're probably like not gonna do. It. <laughs> well, um, you read the I've newspaper heard, but, and uh, there's like a bit about oh yeah, somebody was shopping for a ring or something, and suddenly that's so important, but you gloss over this small detail. Right. But then you've also got the like a cricket scores in one of them. It's like, well, I don't know if I should really pay attention to the cricket scores in case that's apparently a thing I need to know. Right. So you end up reading every last thing you can and it just gets a little bit tiresome. And, you know, I I, I would play this again as kind of like a group setting. You know, sure. like maybe like two or three of us, three or four of us, you know, we just want to have an event evening of this. But it was never going to stay in the collection and get played over all the other ones. I mean, I, yeah. I even got Mortem, the medieval one, from Essen, played it, reviewed it, went through the entirety of that, got rid of it because I'd already played it all, and still had not even thought about, oh, yeah, you know what? I could pick up Sherlock. It's like, nah, because I can do this quicker. So it, it just got to that point. Uh, are we going to have anything that overlaps with the Dice Tower list? Well, I can't speak for Greg, but as far as I'm aware, I, d oh, uh, I don't know. One or two of them, I can't recall if they did or not, but actually I don't think most of mine would uh, clashes with the Dice Tower's list. I started watching it and pretty much fell asleep so <laughs> I, I never oh. got through that video <laughs> and, uh, i've been listening to most of the top 100 again just like trying to do oh, work yeah. today. the benefits of working from home i can just put like top 10 lists on in the background right. of the people that i've not seen but nah but nah that's nah, so enough just time gets in the way of everything which is such a shame so on to nines so again the the top 
like my six through ten are like games that I actually really like still, but they just not what they used to be. So you don't right, watch so the Dice Tower videos, but you're now pulling the Sam Healy here. You know, oh, is my, that the same? My, my ten so, through my ten through so, five are this one, and then my five through one are games I. No, so it's the it's <laughs> just the way it felt. I mean, there was definitely a sense of like just things I I, I used to love and like ah eh, now I'm like whatever. Um, and number nine is is Gloomhaven, and the Woo-hoo! reason the reason I've cooled on it has a lot to do with Jaws of the Lion coming out. Because I actually really love... (laughs) I really love Jaws of the Lion. I I think it's an amazing... It's just a tight package. (laughs) It's a a good narrative. Um, It is... You know, you can as a solo player, I can get it out. I can get it to the table, and I can play it, and I can have fun with it. And it's like a really manageable campaign of like 15 to 20 scenarios. Most of the time, you're going through that campaign, which I've played like four or five times. where just Gloomhaven, it's just so much to set up, and the narrative is oh, so God. garbage. Like I, yes. and I know people who have like figured it out and like actually understand what the hell they were doing. Like I never got to that point <laughs> with that game. I was like, I always liked the mechanics, but I was like, what is this? What is happening? Why is this game what it is? Um, and I grew to really love Gloomhaven, and that was a lot to do with my friend group that we just really had a good time with it. But then Jaws came out. I was like, yeah, this is so much better. Like this is such a better experience. And like the idea of taking Gloomhaven out and never playing it again. I just I can't even fathom why I would do that. Oh, when so I have hang on a minute. There. So you still like the game, but you play the Jaws of the Lion one? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. And I'm I mean I'm excited about Frosthaven <laughs> too. I like that's oh. where we're like we're different. I I just like I still like the system, but what Gloomhaven lacks in narrative and consistency and like just intrigue like every scenario in gloomhaven oh, like so not everyone only the two only the two like big bare bones of a campaign game it right was exactly like the, the campaign thing. was <laughs> garbage like it had the mechanics but the campaign was like always lacking for me whereas like in so many of the scenarios in gloomhaven i feel like 90 percent of them are like kill all enemies but jaws yep. of the lion is a so much more interesting and this has a lot more going on with it and, and it makes me excited for frosthaven i think frosthaven is going to be pretty awesome and my game group's excited for it yeah. but um, I, n- I never got far enough with Jaws of the Liners or like, I mean, I thought like, well, it's just Gloomhaven again. I'm not, you know, Gloomhaven, <sighs> Gloomhaven yeah, yeah, yeah. made simpler and easier, but yeah, I mean, it's I, not it's that quite... much easier. I'll tell you that much. I mean, it's a little streamlined, a little streamlined, but for the most part, it's Gloomhaven. It's the same game. So if you don't like the mechanics, yeah, don't get Jaws. <laughs> Uh, um, it's, it's just like made easier but i mean the mechanics of this was okay but it was just like having to play a card to loot and then as soon yeah, as the yeah. scenario finishes all oh, right all the loot's gone it's like well no it's literally there i can just pick it up off the floor but the game just took forever you were there for hours right. and hours with four players like trying to get through a single scenario where you go through three rooms and i don't like the idea that you can game the system in terms of the combat because the yeah, the idea is, is that I like the idea of just I'm rolling these dice because I'm doing my magic missile against the dragon or something. Does it fail? Maybe, but I shouldn't be able to sort of. It's like taking the what do they call it? The has the the mat system from um, the VAT system from Fallout. Those games. It's like taking that sort of slow mo thing and then actually going forwards in time as well, so you can actually see what's going in. So it's like, mm. ugh, I don't know, and oh god, James. Seriously, if you don't know who James is, Greg, basically he's the dad joke of mine and Paul <laughs> Grogan's channels, and he's already starring. <laughs> I mean, I was I was digging his ice cool thing, man. I appreciated that from you know a dad he, joke. He won't stop. I don't know where he gets them from. I swear. Like, <laughs> he just generates them every now and again. It's like a random number generator, except it's dad jokes, <laughs> which is fine. But I don't. Know. I mean, I don't. Like I said, I don't detest Gloomhaven. I just like thought it was meh overall, like below average. But it just does my head in how popular it is. That's what yeah, you know, the whole right. thing of like we've yeah, just appeared. Yeah, yeah. It's a giant box no one can get, and it costs nearly two hundred quid at the time. But it should right. be number one on Board Game Geek. No, <laughs> it's like just not. Fine. Yeah. Ah well. I had that feeling. I I agree to really love it, the system a lot, and and I think that's where Jaws finally brought in the rest of the stuff. I felt the the base game was lacking for sure. Well, we'll see what happens. Well, I can only imagine the uh, the uproar will happen once uh, Blue Haven gets onto the shelf. Oh, sorry, uh, Frost Haven. Frost <laughs> so it's, Haven. Not, yeah. it's not just it's not just the color blue, but all right, all right. So <laughs> my nine is an abstract game, which is literally it's actually well, yeah. Spoiler alert! It's it's in view depending on how you look at my webcam, but um, I do think this is still a solid game. But you only play it one on one or two v two. And 
having that set up means that I don't tend to get two players to the game very often. So I'm forced to do this as a 2v2. The problem is, and this is with War Chest, as much as it is cool, it's, I don't know, I've just never felt the need to sort of get it out too often because some of the units are more interesting to use than others. It is beautifully produced. I do love that. But the other problem is, is that this is not one of those games that I think is good with casual players. I think you kind of need to half know what you're doing because there have been games where I've been against or teamed up with someone who either isn't getting into the game or doesn't know what they're doing. And it can sour the experience, particularly if they claim that something's broken or, you know, like, it's like, oh, this game's broken. I'm losing. It's so bad. It's like, well, yeah, because you put your guys on your starting spots and blocked yourself out. What do you think was going to happen? And, you know, I like the concept of it, the fact you've got these different units and it's still enjoyable, but it just hasn't hit the table in a long, long time. I've never been compelled to grab the expansions. Uh, I think it's just the base set I've literally got behind my head here. And so the longer it gets left, the more I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'm not that fussed, really. You know, I, eventually, I think it will sell. But look at it. It's so beautiful. It's so good components. I hate the idea of selling these poker chips. No, I, I never heard of it, man. <laughs> you never heard of this? It, it was, um, it's from AEG. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, there are, it was there, but it's just such a good production. Sure. Maybe if it had a solo mode. I don't think it's right. got an official solo mode to it, so I bet there's some unofficial one that's made, but even then, I don't know how it would work. I think this... But bear in mind, it's also a bag-building game, so you're drawing sure. chips out of the bag to sort of see what units you can use. It just... Like I say, I, I certainly wouldn't call it bore chest. <laughs> you know, as I, kind of <laughs> says. I don't think the game's boring. I still enjoy it, but like I say, just that 2v2 can get a little bit you know, problematic. I, I prefer playing it one-on-one, -on -one, but I just don't get two-player games to the table often, so it just kind of oh, man. isn't going to work on that front. The two-player genre is so like tough, because it's so it's it crowded. says the person who does solo playthroughs. But, but no, but I, I mean, I look, I actually game with friends occasionally. Um, but, and like, it's just so <laughs> tough. It's so crowded between like War of the Rings, you know, Rebellion. I mean, Twilight Struggle, Imperial Struggle. I mean, we just started playing Space Empires 4X. It's, you just don't have the time. And then oh, like all the no one has two player time games. after that one. Cool, blimey. Yeah, How many hours yeah, yeah. does that take? <laughs> I I actually really like that game. I'm digging it. <laughs> I've not played it. I mean, the component quality puts me off it like hard. On oh, yeah, Isn't yeah. that something like a four plus hour game or something to finish? Yeah, it's long. It's really long. So, <laughs> oh, you know. outstayed its welcome. I don't know. I've always got a bit of a limit on that front. Uh, but oh, yeah, so yeah. Ho hopefully, these eights won't be as long. <laughs> So number eight for me was part of like my journey in realizing that I can get a game and just not own it forever. And that's fine. Like, that's okay. <laughs> like good games don't need to like stay in your collection forever. Cause there's other good games you might want to play. Um, and that's this war of mine, which is such a, that's two of some of my favorite games that uh, you're like destroying here, man. No, <laughs> man. Like I, I use, I, I'm so enraptured by that game. Uh, but it just, it's so heavy that the idea of getting it back to the table, I just like, it was like, I can't, I just don't. And I think, you know, especially in light of like recent world events, it's, it, it just became something that I'm like, I'm never putting this on the table. Um, it, that's understandable. That it is a little bit on the nose given what's going on. But, uh, oh, I mean, yeah. I, I have to try and detach myself whenever I do that thing and just assume it's a fictional landscape or something because it's, it's right. otherwise, yeah, it would get a little bit problematic. But oh, Dude, I, still I love this game. Blimey. It's so it's interesting, interesting, man. It's it's really <laughs> well done. I, I I um I put it on the channel. I think like three times, four times, and one of the it's like one of the first times on the channel i'm talking about the game but like the first event was like this woman like selling her daughter to the soldiers to make money and i'm like oh like this is a rough start to this video right. hello hi welcome to solo playthroughs um so it was <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so like heavy and like just leaves you i think the first time i ever won the game it was like my my guy, like my victory condition is he basically was depressed and committed suicide ten years later. And you're like, did I win? Did I Ooh. not? Like, what just happened? You know. Um, and I. So, so everyone knows that. Did you ever win it? I've won it. Oh yeah, it's winnable. I mean, there's a. You play any game enough, you'll figure out how to win it. I mean, 
it it takes I, a little bit of like working out, but also I would yeah. say it's easier to win the scenarios than it is mm -hmm. to win the base game mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, I see that. you get some scenario. I can't remember if the base set came with scenarios, but I know the yeah. the first expansion did, and the those scenarios are a bit easier to win where they've got like a special setup and a special ending yeah. or something. It's also slightly shorter because they don't quite have as many yeah. events or chapters, so. Yeah. I think they tend to be a bit more winnable, but oh, I mean, I mean, this War of Mine, I still, the, the theme in this is so rich. I mean, part oh, now that we talk <laughs> about it, I want to load up the video game again. I keep saying this every right. time I talk about this War of Mine. I never do time-wise, but I feel like I want to load up the video game again because the atmosphere is so good. I like the fact that it's mm. a bit dark and somewhat like uh, uncomfortable in that respect because the decisions you do just feel a little bit more meaningful. And that Days right. of the Siege campaign I played was fantastic i mean you talk about like the, the you know the daughter thing yeah there was a uh, few uh you know if you're not a fan of um armies and you know conscripting kids and stuff like that it's like yeah uh, uh <laughs> it's like i gave no, a few things in there you know that poor orphanage but <laughs> i tried my best <laughs> i tried my best <laughs> yeah no it's it's fun i mean again like i i'll probably say this again later too but for me like some games are just like really good books but i just I just want to read them once, and I'm kind of like good. I mean, but I look—I read that book multiple times. I just don't want to read it again. <laughs> like, but yeah, there are there are two scenarios in the base game, and I agree they're a lot easier. They're shorter, which is nice. And then the other thing, they let you start with some fittings, so you're not like mm -hmm. starting with absolutely nothing. So it, it get, kind of gets you almost into like a mid-game setup, and that's really cool. So you have some really good, interesting decisions early, which get you to see like some strategies that might work if you were yeah. to play the long game again. Um, yeah, the, but yeah, the it's, it's are definitely game. the best way. Or you house rule, maybe doing like a couple of rounds All less right. or something. I mean, at the end of the day, it's more about the story as to whether you win. Because even the even if you do win, it's not like you win like yay we all live or like no it's like we all live but a media is miserable uh africa is like um <laughs> contemplating her own mortality or something and aston uh, eventually gave in to his smoking habit or something it's like okay as endings go it's not like it's birds no, chirping on the, on the tree branches it's right it's a heavy one but then i'm a person who absolutely adored the black mirror series and we know what that yeah. series gets like sometimes. <laughs> i think it's really it, good i think i just i don't like gross horror but i like psychological horrors yeah. oh, yeah. um well not that i wouldn't i wouldn't call black mirror psychological horror but I, I, it's more the it's that it's that sort of dark drama thing you know it's it's like i don't want it to be gross but if it can make me feel uncomfortable that can be sort of interesting watching that's what black mirror does i go through the whole episode right. i'm thinking what is going on this is intriguing hits me with a belter of an ending and then i'm practically like thinking about it at night going that was right. harsh <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it gets there so yeah, I mean, it's not for everybody. If you don't like dark themes, stay away from this war of mine. Otherwise, go in and enjoy, because <laughs> I do. All right, well, let's go to the complete opposite of this war of mine, because we've now got a light, well, it's lightish, it's probably midweight, but we're talking colorful, fluffy, you know, pleasant, very nice, you know, pretty much everything about this game is probably the opposite of this war of mine in terms of its theme and like darkness <laughs> and everything like that. But campaign games are a problem when they're more fun as a campaign than they are as a, like a standalone game. And so I still really enjoy this game and I love a lot of the games that um, this guy, this designer has done, but I do have a problem that I just don't feel like grabbing near and far off the shelf as much anymore. <laughs> you know, I've got it over there. I've got sleeping gods above it and sleeping gods, is more enjoyable overall. Yeah, that one I can pull out a bit more, even though that's a long campaign, I can pull it out solo a bit more. But the problem I've got with Near and Far is I've played it as a campaign, the full campaign with some friends. We've also played the character campaigns, which are shorter and better because, you know, playing 11 games in a row is a lot more difficult than playing three or four in a row. But now that I've done that, it's not like the plots are, you know, this war of mine level intricate or anything like that these are just basically a plot to get through the the game really the game mechanics are good but i don't really want to play it in arcade mode where you basically just flip a card off the deck for a quest and you get like a, t a two sentence thing of you come across some pirates in a clearing what do you do and that just doesn't seem like it really gives me as much enjoyment so i haven't been compelled to pull it off the shelf but i do like it 
it's just uh i don't know the this is the problem i have with campaign games in general you've either got to commit to them or you can't play them right and I, i've never games. played yeah near and far above and below i they're always been on my radar I just always had someone else i wanted to buy more <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think I have a couple of friends with Sleeping Gods. I expect I'll get that to the table with someone at some point this year for sure. Well, Sleeping Gods, I mean, you could do that as a solo thing. Yeah, but I prefer yeah. it solo, honestly. You know, controlling yeah. nine characters is not that difficult. Uh, right. And what changes they might make to it with this expansion coming out, I don't know. But I haven't backed it. I thought like I'll, I'll see how I feel if I can get another campaign of it played before that new one releases and see whether I still want it because. I am getting to this point where I'm slightly burnt out on campaign games. Yeah, yeah. Like, for right loud, does everything need a rotten campaign? I've only got so much time on my hands. And I as much that. as I like the Euro mechanics of this game, I don't feel like I would pull it out solely just to enjoy the Euro mechanics of this game. It's like, I, I liked the way it blended. And so this was one of my favorite games to play for a bit. Me and the group loved this. We'd probably still enjoy it if we played it again, but I'm just kind of like, yeah, I can't really get together with them much to play a campaign. Do I keep it? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's just one of those things. And I think if you can't make the game stand on its own without having to commit loads of games to it, I think it just suffers in general. And it certainly does suffer with me. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I say, seven months ago, I bought Spreading War for Journey to Middle Earth. I've only just managed to find mm. the time to actually sit down, get it on the table and go, you know what, I'm going to power through 12 13 scenarios of it right. i'm enjoying every minute of it but i had to find the time it's <laughs> i hate adult life why couldn't i have gone the board games when i was like 14 <laughs> or something when i didn't have a care in the world apart from jesus ease it would have been fine so it's <laughs> just one of those right. things really um what we got there sleeping gods is a horrible multiplayer game i mean huh. that that is true uh it well true-ish i mean it it doesn't work as well multiplayer as it does solo because you you're basically just sharing out the characters and i think there's a little bit of a like oh you get to use this but then i have to use this or whatever and it's like it's much better just to play it solo and control all nine characters really you know it sounds sure. like a lot but it's not a big deal hence why i think people aren't as fan of it's a multiplayer but nah i love the open-ended world of it and still get a kick out of that one so Maybe near and far will leave the collection and I'll just keep sleeping gods. That might be simpler. Anyway, on to sevens. Uh, <laughs> number seven reminds is me of one of the... Is, it, is this going to be another game that I love? Just out of interest? No, <laughs> no, definitely not. I can actually almost definitively say no. So actually reminds me of one of my favorite lines that I heard you say in all of your hours of video. Um, Rolodex, the card game. Uh, roll next to board game the uh seventh continent oh <laughs> oh no i called it i called it the i was it i called it um was it roll it there was some no, finally, I oh, it... finally cabinet <laughs> Dude, I called it. Uh, I I called it filing cabinet. The game that was what it was. Yes, yes, yes. No, I I I, I still love the line. I just had it wrong, but yeah, dude, it's hilarious because it. I yeah, I can't play it anymore without thinking of. I like having the card game. Um, <laughs> Seventh Continent is uh, it's such a grind, and the grind's fine Ooh. when you're working out the puzzle. And I actually really like the expansions. I don't love all the curses, but Icy Maze I thought was great the first time I did it. Forbidden Sanctuary, and there's this drive to actually like accomplish it. And then you beat all the curses once, and you're like, why would I ever play this game again? Like it just because yes. now you have all grind and no puzzle, <laughs> and I mean you could put it away for six months, come back, and you'll have to figure it out again to some level. But you you kind of you've seen all the bells and whistles, man. It is what it is. Um, but like what it's a cool game. I I mean that was one of my top tens for a while. I really really enjoyed um, working through it all. And I, at one point I was gonna buy all the expansions, and they just weren't available. And then by the time they were available again, I was like, I don't want those. <laughs> I've just moved uh, on to something I, else. I did. Know? This is a good pick, actually, because I think Tom Vassell had this one on his list as well. Um, did he? He's excited for Seventh Citadel. I'm uh, not yeah, excited yeah. for Seventh Citadel if it's just going to be like this, though. And I, right. I liked the game at first, but yeah, that grind came on quick. I think like I was these first few cards are like the start of it, and I was going like, yeah, "Oh, this yeah. is cool! Oh, I flip over! Oh, a bit of story, and I'll do this puzzle, and I'll get this item. Oh, I like this card system." But it very quickly waned, and as you realized, "Wow, I'm doing 
only this. By the yeah. way, which direction am I supposed to be going? <laughs> so right. I spent like a good like couple of days going around various places that had nothing to do with the curse I was doing. And right. by the time I even got to the first bit of the curse I was doing, like, oh, here's this statue thing you were meant to find. It, like, I'd gotten so frustrated by that point. I'm like, I honestly don't care about your stupid statue. And it's like, go right. find two gems. No, how about you go find two gems? I've been <laughs> between my deck and bustling through this filing cabinet here. Like, God knows how much. I'm done. You know, and it just really got sour like cob I mean, I thought like oh right well the second girl so I just do the same but I go off in a different direction. Oh, yeah. I got fed up with this filing game. I'm gonna use the phrase because that is what it is. You spend yeah. most of the time in the game flicking through these cards here to try and find the number that you want. I right. swear it's as bad as piloting a complex AI, you know. Right. It's... Well, then when you have to put it all back every time like get those those pause points. Oh. I got 20 minutes of getting everything back in <laughs> Mm. <laughs> and then the permadeath is so obnoxious. But I, I think Seventh Citadels. I have three, like two or three friends that backed it. I didn't, but I, I'm sure I'll play it with them. And I think the fact that they're doing a chapter system will probably make the game a lot better. Yeah, um, I mean, it sounds like maybe? they've taken on some feedback, which is will say they've yeah. taken on some feedback by the sound of it, and all well and good. You know, I'm totally yeah. down for that. But I, it, it's just like I think the concept was better than the. The execution of yeah. that one can they improve it fine but you're gonna have to really show me something and even then i'm not gonna be like oh sorry you know backing it or going mad for it it will be a case of if it turns up on my doorstep i'll play it and see what happens but yeah it's like you've, you've soured me on the first one so right <laughs> but you know, some sequels can be better we'll see how it turns out all right number seven right this one yeah, this one took a fair bit of a dive fairly quick, but I think it sort of like ended up at an eight at first, and now it's like, uh, now I'm actually trying to sell it. This game came out with Days of Wonder originally, and I couldn't find, I think I played that copy of it a couple of times. I thought, oh yeah, I really want to get this. And then it became impossible to find. So I thought, all right, let's grab the Tasty Minstrel reprint of it. You know, because that should, you know, should be good. And as much as the... I'm fine with the, you know, it's a very cutesy, cartoony artwork, and you know, but it had good components. It was produced well. But yeah, I got some problems now with Coliseum that I'm not as big of a fan of it anymore. And it's not that I don't like it. I mean, firstly, you have to put a timer on the trade phase. You, you have to do free form trading. Do not do what it says in the books. It will take forever. You have to obviously set a time limit on it. But this game says 60 to 90 minutes. I swear it goes over that 90 minutes like regularly. It's just a bit problematic. But it's got some mechanics that you normally wouldn't go for, like roll and move. So it's, it's probably going to show off some of the Days of Wonder version here. So the pictures are kind of a little bit mixed up. But yeah, I suspect that's the case. But the idea was, was that you were built, putting on a show. So it's like, okay, this is fun. And I... It's not in the rule book, but I usually say, right, when you put on the show, describe how it's going. And you can get some like almost like Monty Python esque humor going through where it's just all you know, rubbish and that. But the problem is that's group dependent. I can find people who play this and who don't do that. And suddenly the theme of it's gone. But you've got roll and move. So this guy, you know, they move around the outside and it's luck whether they end up in your Coliseum for bonus points. But the worst thing that's soured me is a similar problem with an honorable mention i have where i'm cooling on tricarian a bit which mm -hmm. is the idea that you have to plan the end of the game in advance so it's all right say you're right my strategy is going to be i'm going to go for like blue like water or something like that you know when you're playing some other game but in coliseum and tricarion you have to like build up to the final <laughs> trick or show and so you basically have to look ahead to see where you're aiming towards and work up to that point. That causes chronic AI, um, chronic AP from players. It means that you've got to spend ages looking through this massive chart of all the plays that you can put on, looking at all their requirements, like lions and you know chariots and doors and plants, or whatever that you get. And you're trying to figure out the route to get from A to B to C, which can go wrong at any time, is influenced by trading, and makes this game impossible to play with any light gamers because there's too much to do. You just can't physically teach this to new gamers or non-gamers. So who am I playing this with? 
Hardcore gamers don't want the roll and move around the outside or the cutesy weird theme of it, but then light gamers can't understand the thing. Yeah, dude, it's another game I never heard of. <laughs> you play so much more games than me. Well, it sounds like you're you're saving. You've not Harry. heard of this one even. You're you're saving Harry Gnome some money, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Possibly, you keep... it's just, you you it can work, but you want to cap it at four players, and even then, you need to find people who are going to ham this up like crazy. Like you've really got to get into that theme, and like even though the book doesn't say it, because the book just says cash in your tokens, and there's the play you put on that's worth this much x amount of money. No, Dice Tower did this as well when they used to do playthroughs of it. You've got to right. say what what your play is. You know, if your play involves like you know chariots and plants or sorry, tell me how that makes a show, and particularly how when you're missing certain bits of it, what what does that entail? And that just creates a lot of cool humor bits. But again, if you get people playing this who are trying to be serious Euro gamers, that goes out the window. <laughs> right. And no, there's no solo mode, so, so that's not going to work either. <laughs> I don't know how you would even physically do a solo mode for this, but yeah, I mean, I, I liked it, but I just think I had a few good plays of it and then struggled to get it to the table again, struggled to find the group that was good for it. And now I'm just like, yeah, it's just sitting on my shelf, taking up space. I know it's out of print and I know it's going to be somewhat rare because obviously, you know, TMG going down, but I've got Pioneer Days, Old West, Eminent Domain. I've got better TMG games on my shelf. This one, I think, is just not cutting it. Yeah, I don't know why my uh, my video keeps getting fuzzy, but I will try to. Uh... <laughs> if I keep changing the resolution, it comes back. So I'll I'll be on top of that. Well, if they if they see no evil, that's fine. Also, they can still hear you <laughs> as long as the voice doesn't go. That's the main thing. Even right. if they got to listen to you in podcast mode, I guess. Uh, well, but cool. say hopefully I'll get to some games you've heard of though with sixes. Six was the first game. I really dove into true solo and uh, that's Scythe. And okay. I, I still like it. I want to get it to the table more than I do. I, there's a lot of problems. I don't, the solo mode doesn't do much for me anymore. I've just kind of moved on to like more complicated games that have just more interesting decisions bases for me. But, you know, I feel like you play enough games of Scythe solo. It's a kind of the same game over and over. Like, and then it comes down to like, out of the battle for the center, the factory and, you know, do you pull the right cards or not? Scythe? Um, yeah. <laughs> no? I mean, if you're playing solo, because, I mean, the area control part of it is so huge, right? I mean, it's it's always within a couple of points if you're playing on hard. At least the way I was playing it. Like, I would always feel like, you know, can I win the battles or not? And there's like there's one or two key battles that kind of, you know, made the game in the solo in the solo mode for me. Um, but I mean, this, I mean, was, this one's kind of a hard one because I still love this game. It's not top yeah, 10 material like it used to be, but I never right. really play it solo. This has always been a multiplayer game for me. Yeah, I think if you solo a lot of times, like you play enough, it's like the same story. That's not so true competitively. The problem is I played it so much solo, like my friends don't want to play this game with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't do good at it or something. I, I mean, relative to them, right? I mean, it's like, I mean, if I play with a really serious ice player, they'd crush me, I'm sure. But like with my friend group, like, yeah, you're probably playing for second place. You know, there's only two games that's happened. I really try not to play competitive games solo too much. Like, I play co op games solo, it's fine, but I just don't want to get too good. Like, Gaia Project's another one. My friend group, like, it's just not that fun of a game for anybody because i'm just gonna kill you most of I the mean, time right uh, um, i don't oh, i don't mind guy project i guess i got bored with terra mystica after a while and gp uh, was just the same game so i never never really got into that one as much but i get that right. that works quite well as a solo game oh it's fantastic the rules oh it's <laughs> a I fantastic still hate... solo game it's so the good. rules still confuse me in that game sometimes but that's, oh, yeah, i mean yeah. so if i play occasion on the app i must admit right. but i don't often play it solo this i must admit yeah this one typically does end up being more of a multiplayer game preferably three or four players although i have managed to do six seven player games of this in 90 minutes with people who do the game which was yeah. quite cool oh but yeah, yeah i love it, the big games of this for sure but it, and you know some of us will be better at the games than some people so we do get that but i mean this one's still really enjoyable for me you know some did you play fenris yeah, I played Fenris. Uh, I played oh, I, the whole campaign of that, and I hated Fenris. Hated. I, I thought it was I really terrible. enjoyed the. I really enjoyed playing <laughs> through that with opening up the stuff, not the story. The story is oh. bland and forgettable. 
It's more I, the stuff that you got in the expansion, like, oh, I get this and this. I'm not going to spoil, but yeah, the yeah, stuff you opened up, I liked. And some of it does actually improve the game. The only problem oh, is I can never I get them agree. played because I'm usually teaching this game, and so I can't throw in this Fenris stuff with people who've yeah. never played Scythe before. So, I, I mean, Fenris was good as a once-through. <sighs> Fine, I've opened it and tried it, but... Uh, I sold Fenris I mean, after I mean, one I playthrough. It's gone. I was, I, I was not a fan. I, there were so many things I didn't like about Fenris. That's a whole other video. <laughs> it, it, it's fine. I mean, it's overkill, really. You've got to be a yeah. high fan to go over it. I mean, if you just get base game Scythe, you're kind of set, really. You can get the two extra factions if you really want. Personally, I quite like the Wind Gambit one. The ships add really? a bit of mobility. The ships add a bit more mobility around the board, so you're not quite stuck all the time. But also, I right. like those end game trigger tiles. Sure, they're yeah. really cool because it's not just get six stars anymore. It's now right. whatever the scenario is, and that just adds a bit more variety in as it goes along. But no, nah, I mean, I can see people burning out on Scythe, but now nah, it's still a pretty pretty solid one for me, at least for now. We shall see. Right, I mean, Hexy, uh, Hexy Beast wants to play some uh, Wingspan. That's fine. I, li I like Sw Wingspan enough. That's another game I don't understand why it's so popular, but it's fine. <laughs> oh, Wingspan is awesome. Stop bragging on my favorite game. Now. <laughs> oh, man. I suppose it's, I, suppose I got to take as much as I can dish out, though, because I'm usually the one <laughs> bragging on other people's games on this chat when they're doing collabs with me. So now it's the other way around. So I suppose I got to take what I can dish. But uh, this one, I, I like to hope you've heard of this one. And I'd be surprised if you hadn't. Particularly surprised if you've not tried it solo because most people do love to play this one solo. But it is a giant box sitting on my shelf over there in the other room. And I do enjoy it. But that size of the box, and we'll, there'll be more on this later for that fact, is kind of getting in the way of me wanting to grab this massive thing on the table, spend a while teaching it to players. And then the more I've played it, the, the more I've realized that it doesn't actually have a very strong theme. It's mostly a mechanical game, and that is Sarah in it to be for Dwellings of Eldervale. Oh, so yeah. I do enjoy it, and I will play it, but I am starting to wane. In fact, I'm going to drop that to a 7 right now. There you go, live update rating. But You just it, made some like looks... Elysio fans very upset. <laughs> I have to admit, I tend not to... Uh, with Mike Delisa, I think. I mean, out of all the people on the Dice Tower main crew, the A listers, yeah, probably he's the one I gel with the least in terms of game taste. Like oh, I say, yeah, there's, there's a few stuff he likes that. though, but but he does love Spirit Island, so you know, fair enough. Um, but yeah, he absolutely adores this game, and I just it's it's still good. I do like it. I like Luke Laurie's designs in general. I mean, Whistle Mountain is still one of my favorite games of all time. I love that game, but it the problem is the monsters in this are a bit of a gimmick. You do get them from time to time, but that's kind of it. But the main problem is that the theme is not as strong as I thought. Because when you think about it, yes, you've got all these different factions. And yes, they uh trying to get a more close-up picture. But you, know, you get all these factions and they've all got different rules and that. And that's all cool. I like that. But when, when you look at it, it's mainly just area control putting up houses. That's essentially what the game is. You're more... You know, these factions have all got little abilities with their troops, and that's cool. But the crux of the game is mainly just put some guys out and set up shop. <laughs> it's like, I don't want that. It just doesn't really work. You know, these creatures look awesome, and I get to control them if I'm fortunate to pick up a card that lets me do it. That's not what I want. Hmm. And I thought these cards would be a bit more interesting. Like, oh, I can choose a, a type of a, a type of magic to go through. So this game, I'm going to do fire. This game, I'm going to do ice. And you realize that the cards don't really feel like you're casting ice storm or fireball or anything. They're just cards. So whichever one of these schools of magic I pick, I feel like I'm just playing a similar game. Just and especially as anybody can kind of dive into some of those cards anyway. And not all of them are that great. I don't, just, I'm starting to see chinks in the armor. And mm. even though it's got a very good solo mode, the Ghosts of Eldervale, whatever it is, I think that's actually my preferable way to play it. It's a lot to get out of the box, even with these mm. trays. You've got to set the tiles up. There's quite a fair amount of rules. It's not the most intuitive game in the world. And then when it all boils down to it, it is mostly about go to a spot and set up a house. <laughs> that is the primary mm. thing you're doing. So I think as you know as has been said you know it's pricey as well it's just yeah i don't know I, I mean i still enjoy it but 
I don't know if I want to hang on to my copy much anymore, which is a shame because it is well produced. <laughs> it looks great. I, it is one of those games though that I wonder, like, have we gone too far <laughs> in like? Oh, we've the... crossed that bridge ages. Ago, I mean, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> but it's like such a. a low hanging fruit example of that right it, it just if you put that i mean even put that in the blood rage box right like put it in something <laughs> give me like just smaller minis less and i would consider buying it but the price point for what it is now i'm like i just yeah i i yeah i'm I mean, interested that, but i'll never pick it up i think you can get it off their website now but even then it's just it's a lot and what am i actually paying for but these tiles with the minis uh, like the miniatures you could do that for less money. It's mostly yeah. the game trays, really, and those big monsters. Right. And the big monsters are just a gimmick, especially if you get the ones with the sound bases. Sure. Um, you know, they are just a gimmick because, oh, yeah, yeah. like I say, they wander <laughs> around the map and occasionally get in your way. But other than that, you only get to control one if you're fortunate. And these game trays are cool, and I do like them. You know, they work with the uh, mechanics of the game as well. Although those boards that you put on top of them to say what your faction is, they slide in so tight that by the time you've lifted them out of the trays a little bit, you actually get wear and tear on those boards. Mm. Not something you want to happen in a game that costs you like you know Gloomhaven prices. Yeah. So and there you go. Set up a shop, get some points. These resources are generic. The cards are generic. These magic schools do not feel differentiated enough. And so I wanted mm. a thematic magic slinging spells game. I mean, you know, I've, yeah, you know, I, I literally before we started this stream, I thought, well, what am I going to do to kill 40 minutes before I have to come on here when we got the hours wrong? So I thought, all right, well, I signed back up the Funimation brief. Then I thought I wanted to watch Fairy Tale, the anime. I was saying that's about wizards. So I thought, cool, I've, I've watched the pilot episode of that. That felt that's the sort of thing I wanted. I wanted like fucking fire magic and you know dragon magic and stuff like that. You know, all cool stuff, not set up shop the game. I don't know. So it just, yeah, it it's just kind of waned on me. But uh, you, I mean, you've heard of this one. You've just never oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've played any of the games on your list yet. I've def I've heard of half of them, so we're good. <laughs> but to be fair, most of the games that would be on my list, you either love because you already played them on your channel, oh, yeah, yeah. or I hate, which means they wouldn't be on this list because I never got warm to them in the first place. So yeah. it's <laughs> it's going to be a case of like you know the Spirit Island versus the Mage Knight. It's yeah, it's yeah. not good. I can't think of. I'm pretty certain no game that you play on your channel is on my list. So that should be safe. Right. But if, if anything, a game that's like that's on your channel is probably one I adore and just don't play as often as you. You know, you're the one who's got to teach me how to do better at Spirit Island or something. That's the way it'll have to be. <laughs> we'll do a collab. Um, we could we could do you could do Spirit Island by uh I during the pandemic I played Spirit Island over oop. Zoom so many times. It was great. Oop. Sorry about that. We had a yeah. we had a spam thing in the chat there for a second yeah. though, but that person has yeah. been blocked. That is that's the first time that's happened. So hopefully that doesn't oh, become man. a recurring recurring thing. But I'll monitor it, so I'll keep an eye. But yeah, that person has been blocked, so hopefully you're not seeing those. Anyway. Let's cool. get out where we're on. Fives. Jonas is uh, misinformed about your love for Mage Knight. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, number five yeah, for me. He's also, he's also giggling. I'm pretty certain he knows that he's uh, a little bit sarcastic. There, so. Um, so number five, I... I got really excited about and i got a couple of waves in and i'm like this is great and my mrs playthrough is sarah she is like a huge fan of deck builders so i was like great she hates co-op so i was like i need to she wants to kick my ass in game she doesn't like cooperating with me so i was like maybe i can find a co-op she'll actually really like um so i picked up aeon's end and i got first wave second wave and it i loved it i got on the channel a few times and then it's like they came out with wave six or wave five and now wave six is about to be kickstarted and the more con i'm like i just don't want any more of it like and it's like the more please, content is out there the less i want to play the content i have right <laughs> it's like one please, of those say, things. please say this is zombicide because that will make some people no aeon's end aeon's oh. end oh aeon's, aeon's end. end sorry yeah, <laughs> yeah um i mean it's good like it's a nice it's a fun puzzle. It gets a nice cooperative deck builder. I'll get to the table once in a while and like, you know, we'll go against a, a, a nameless, but the nameless all have names. And as John, I see Jonathan in the <laughs> chat before, like, why do the nameless have names? It really kind of drives yeah. me. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, dude. Um, but you know, I digress. It's just, uh, 
it's a fine game. I actually don't mind the art that much. Like it's kind of hokey eighties. That's fine. It works. Um, but it just doesn't do enough for me to keep wanting to get it back. And I think in general, I'm waning a little spoiler alert for another game down the, down the list. I'm waning <laughs> on like deck builders as a whole Like, And not like, I mean, I know maze Knights a deck builder. I won, but I, I, I'm I waning on deck builders. Crossover. We could Probably. have a crossover. <laughs> I wonder. I'll be amazed if that's the same one, but we won't yeah. spoil anymore. But yeah, this I mean this one I liked the premise of it because I thought, okay, so you're basically saying this is a bit like Sentinels in the Multiverse, except it's back to being a deck builder, but uh, it's still everybody against one boss. It's fantasy, which kind of sucks for me because I'm kind of bored with generic fantasy. I'd much right. rather it be an IP fantasy. Well, obviously, superheroes is much better. This one I, I like. But the problem is, is that I couldn't go into this not thinking that this is just basically a deck builder of Sentinels in the Multiverse. So mm. now I go in and I play this Rage Ball one. And I go, oh yeah, this is cool. It's yeah. got its unique rule snap. But I'm like, oh, I've got to shuffle my deck a million times. Not to mention this game has taken a long, long time to play, even with only three mm. of us. And uh, this weird, what was it called? The portal thing? Or yeah, this thing. That uh, became more fiddly than I was. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah this yeah. became fiddly. Like having to juggle this around and open up more breaches. I get it's thematic. It worked theme wise, but man, I mean, to chuck it around and sort of decide, like rotate right. them and all that lot. I thought like, oh, uh, oh yeah, sorry, not shuffle. You flip your deck over or something, or you build it. I can't remember, but it was right. There was. It's been a long time since I played it, but it was just like ah, oh, it, it, it had too many fiddly elements, like from a physical standpoint. That I wasn't prepared to sort of go into, knowing that this was always kind of going to be a bit inferior to Sentinels for me. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I, Sentinels always was kind of like I liked it. I never loved it. This one, I actually never say. I, yeah, <laughs> dude, that on your Sentinels. channel immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, yeah. I, um, yeah, I put Sentinels on the channel. I think, but I think it's another game. There's yeah, like once. so much content. <laughs> I put it on twice three times twice at least twice um it's fine like it was cool like i liked a lot of what i was doing but then it's just like all right i, I just kind of moved on um but yeah superhero themes in general just don't do much for me so like that's just a i think a personal preference i just don't have a lot of touch points with with a game like that but um and then i like actively really liked for a while now i'm like eh, it's fine i have wave one and two and I'm happy with that. We're good. Yeah, there's still that. Your printed is still in shriek. Hexy, get on that. Now. <laughs> play it. <laughs> play it immediately. It is awesome. If I can get playthroughs on this channel, you bet I'm putting some yeah. sentinels stuff on there. Because that's I'll, I'll send happen. people to you. I have some patrons that love sentinels, man. I'll yeah. just I'll make sure what you do, let me know. I'll send them to you. What I'm more afraid of though is that if I decide I'm gonna play some Spirit Island, if I can get this set up, I'm probably yeah. gonna be like, you're like, right, I'm gonna play some Spirit Island and then completely mess it up and look like a Dude. complete noob. So it's like, <laughs> it's like watch I me mean... lose to level one Sweden or something. It's like... <laughs> oh, I've had some epic I'll tell you what, one of the things I get a lot is in comments, like at least once or twice a month, someone's like they just appreciate the fact that I put losses on the channel. And like, yeah, dude, like getting crushed in Spirit Island, I think it makes people feel good about them. Mm. <laughs> They're just like, oh, you get there. crushed too. <laughs> it's good. Nah, it doesn't work yeah, it's that not bad. <laughs> um, is it worth it if you don't like the theme? I do like Sentinels mechanically, but I think if you don't like superheroes at all. That might affect it because I do love superheroes. That does help. Yeah. You know, I can get into the theme and all that, but uh, hmm, yeah, I mean, if you detest superheroes, you're not like into Marvel or DC and that, I think that might impair your enjoyment a little bit, even though mechanically the game is still sound. How have you liked Street Masters? Oh, I love Street Masters. Because it's not the as same much mechanic, as but I mean, right? I it's, it's that same thing of you have your character in your deck, but it's with a skirmish map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, position. I mean, Street Masters is great, but good luck trying to get a copy of it. it took oh me yeah, yeah. To get it, so <laughs> no, it's rough, dude. I um, I like Street Masters a lot. I think I I like it more than Sentinels. I just find it too easy. Like that's my biggest complaint with Street Masters. But I, I do easy. like All it right. more than Sentinels. It's 
I mean, it has been a little easier, but then I think you can tweak the difficulty just fine. I think you can play against can some you? harder scenarios, surely. I thought yeah, it, there I, are a couple scenarios. Yeah, you'd have to find them, but yeah, there are definitely some yeah. scenarios. I think it there. depends what characters you use as well, because there you may be some which are like, oh, this character just works, and some right. that require a little bit more. But I mean, even if it's slightly easy, it's just fun to sort of go right. This is my character. When I finally got someone to teach me at uh, one of the Paul Grogan's grid cons, it was one on one. I thought I've heard of this game. Please let me like it. Chose yeah. me character, and within about 10 minutes, I was just sold. Like, as soon yeah. as I fir- found my first turkey dinner in a loot box somewhere or something, <laughs> I thought, yes, this is it. <laughs> this is the game I want. And I was so glad to get it. Um, but yeah, that works in that respect. So uh, I'll, I'll sort out my lighting in a minute. It's just because it's getting dark outside. I'll turn my light on after him when, we, when Greg talks about his next game. All right, my number five is... Uh, this is going to annoy a few people because... I liked it a bit at first, and I even gave it a decent rating when I first reviewed it. But this is one of two reviews which I kind of regret the rating I gave it. (laughs) Because once I played it more and more, over time, the chinks in the armor really did suffer. Now, I talk a lot about this publisher's games in a good light. Two of them I've not played, but I mean, I've got Raiders on my wall. It's Raiders of the North Sea is fantastic. I love Architects of the West Kingdom. It's probably one of my favorite worker placement game next to Whistle Mountain. I also adore Viscounts of the West Kingdom and the new Tigris uh, Wayfarers one is certainly, you know, getting interesting for me. But uh, I've kind of cooled a bit on the Paladins one and I cooled on it pretty quickly. Uh, This one is okay. I don't dislike it but it was such a quick drop like uh, you know barely a couple of months later and i'm like oh god yeah i know the minute i realized i mean this one's biggest problem besides the setup and the game length which both are exceedingly long <laughs> kind of ridiculous this one is beyond the realms of dryness <laughs> like the, the theme is almost anti-theme in this but this whole thing here where you're using the colored meeples on your board That was okay, fine. And no, it's not because it's the heaviest of the trilogy, because trust me, I think Wayfarers of the South Tigris is going to give this a run for its money in terms of heaviness. But um, this one basically involves you getting the colored meeples and powering up these actions. And you mainly do these six on the right. You can do these little ones here and you'll do a little bit of developing, but your main crux of getting points are these six here. Starts off with a color, spits out another color, right? And typically you want them to be in sync. So if I put black and get blue, I want to put blue in something else and then get red or something. But this one, basically every single game I play of this is pick two of those actions and spam them until the game ends. That's literally it. You just basically go, right, which two actions work well? Uh, Commission and fortify or commission and absolve. Because I get, I put black in, I get blue, and then I put blue in, and I get black. Great, I'll just spam these two the whole game, and there's my points. Whoopie do! It's it, it, it quickly got repetitive, and as much as I like the options that you've got, I like the meatiness of it, and I certainly like the townsfolk you can grab and bits of that. It is basically just spam two actions and level up some tracks. That gets a bit dull and boring after a while, and so my initial enjoyment of it. Might have just been a little bit hyped from playing a lot of Architects of the West Kingdom and Raiders. And so I probably went into this with, you know, rose-tinted glasses and then came out of it. And then like, ah, actually, maybe this isn't quite as great as I thought. It's it's insane because a lot of people love this one. Like for some people, this is their favorite of the entire lot. And so, but then there are some people who sort of agree and don't like it as well. So it does seem quite divisive. What about your tours? Have you ever played this on solo? I've only played Architects and not solo. I played with a friend who had like all the expansions and like, <laughs> dude, I love my friend. Like he's an amazing teacher of games, but he's like really bad at like, hey, it's your first game. It's just, let's just play the base. He's like, no, we're going to play all the expansions. And like you're going to learn all of it the first time out the gate, which is not great. Um, no. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was too much. But like, it was fine. Like, I like the system enough. It's definitely a game I would want to play more. I just haven't explored the West Kingdom series all that much, for sure. Oh, I mean, I, I love the uh, Architects and Viscounts. I mean, they're two of my yeah. favorite games. I love them. And, but this one was kind of just that uh, this is the dud of the trilogy for me, which is fine on there. Uh, just to quickly go through Andrew's point. Uh, Tempted with Sentinels and the Earth Prime. Right. Um, it's hard to find, as far as I'm aware, cheap in that. But um, 
my friend has it because my friend is like me, a massive Sentinels nerd. Um, he told me about the Cauldron fan expansion you got and showed me a way of how to get them. So it's like, great. He brought Sentinels of Earth Prime to a club night. We played it because he knew I loved it. And honestly, it is very much a case of, do you like Sentinels in the multiverse? If so, you'll love Sentinels of Earth Prime because they are 95% identical games. In fact, probably I dare say 99. It's just that the heroes and the universe that it in is based off an RPG or something. So you've got a slightly weirder motley crew of characters compared to normal Sentinels. But it's, like I say, it, it's awesome because it's just basically Sentinels of the Multiverse more content. So, you know, whichever you like, really, <laughs> it kind of works. And it's pretty easy to solo, I think. Well, you might disagree with me on that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> you I haven't played done it, it solo. You know if it's easy. No, 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 I haven't. I haven't. No, I Sentinels of Multiverse. Oh, Sentinels. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, it takes, it takes some... Like any game, right? Like I feel like all like, solo games, especially, it's like a dance. You just have to learn the steps, and sometimes it takes a little bit. Um, yeah, it's it's not that bad. It's a lot of reading, but if like it's like if you've played Arkham, if you played any game where you, it's like you have to really make sure you read every card, like and read every sentence on every card, and just follow instructions, you're good. <laughs> so yeah, it's not that complicated. Nah, that works for you. So fours. And while Greg talks about his scene at first, I'm going to go turn my light bulb on. So take it away. <laughs> I mean, I was wondering the ambiance. I was like, I'm feeling some romance in here. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> um, <laughs> so four for me is one of those games that I still play fairly regularly because uh, I just have friends that just love it. And it's a good game to play. So I will, I will still play most of the games on this list if somebody wants to play it. Oh but, yeah, uh, I think every game on this list I'll play. Yeah, again yeah. That. Well, but no, nah, I'd still play Paladins. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and that's Citadels. Um, Citadels has just really like waned on me so <laughs> much. <laughs> and you know what it is? I play with my wife so much, and my oh, wife she's just the knows problem, me right, too okay, well. <laughs> no, it, she is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, so she, no, she, she's so good. That's the problem because she just knows me and she just has a way of killing me all the time. And she, she loves the assassin. My wife's a very aggressive player. So that's the problem. So I didn't start winning in Citadels until I just literally randomized my character almost every time and I just neutralized her advantages. <laughs> And now I can win. And I think it's like, it's made the decision space in that game so small that I just feel like I'm playing at a narrative that it's like, <laughs> all right, whatever. Oh, I, one of these three, you don't know who I am. <laughs> so it's fine. Like it's a fun group game. It's definitely like, give me a bourbon and I'll have a great time with it. And I enjoy that sense, but it's no longer a game. I'm like excited to play by any like means. I had to show off like my Ted rate of it. I love this game. I've oh. I played it like even at university when I wasn't even into like board games beyond family stuff at that point. I was just playing like some Steve Jackson games and this one that my friend owned. But we played this like coffin box version of it so often and I still remember enjoying it. And then when this I, I grabbed like the bin box of my own copy and still enjoyed it and then this master set came out and that's been on my shelf since and i still love to bring this out for the great tarot cards the artwork mm. it's so simple to teach and play i even like throwing in the expansion characters you know some yeah. of them not, not all of them some of them are a bit weird or complicated yeah. for new players but i just it it generates a lot of laughs and that tension of like, oh, you pick the assassin. Who do you think I'm going to take then? Eh? I'm a little bit concerned. It's ah, right. <laughs> it, oh, this is still a big love for me. Yeah, it's, the, I do like the expansion characters. I like the Dark City. Like, I mean, I'll, if I just have the Dark City expansion, but my friend has like the full thing with the three different sets, um, and I like some of the changes they made. I think they they reversed an order. I think in the latest expansion, I, I could be wrong about that. Um, but yeah, it's. I think I thought they changed they changed something up with the base characters in the latest no, expansion. The, no, no. I mean these are the base characters here. I mean Assassin One, Thief <sighs> Two, Free Magician. This is not uh, well the King normally Architect. not him, but Architect would be number seven. I mean this is a mixture of base. Oh and yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, No, they're yeah, still yeah. in the same 
Oh, I mean, it went reverse. Maybe they messed up. They might have changed the Dark City. They did something in the, the new game, in the new version. I think they might have they, changed the order of the Dark City. I mean, they but, added more purple stuff in. I mean, if you're right, like counting yeah, yeah. down, that's what Mission Red Planet did, which was a right, sequel. But uh, right. as far as I'm aware, I don't think anything rules was. I mean, they certainly yeah, said yeah. that you always play to seven cities not instead eight. of eight yeah which is which is smart it's a, uh, definitely yeah. like especially in bigger groups like the newer players that's that's a lot yeah. granted i don't tend to bring this out with more than five so <laughs> right yeah five's five's a good number I, i've played some big seven eight player games like once in a while and just, you know again it's just like it's a going in and it's fine i mean i'll enjoy it more because i enjoy the people i'm with than than i actually enjoy the game but you know it is what it is fair enough there you go. There's Greg Four. <laughs> I had to turn the light on. I forgot to do his comment banner, but I mean, come on. The the game was on the screen for ages. You knew we were talking about Citadels. All right, my four, number four. All right, this is going to infuriate a lot of people because this <laughs> argument has been going on so long. Remember I just mentioned about a game that I gave a good rating to and then quickly saw the chinks in the armor? Oh, boy, did I see the chinks in the armor quick after rating this one an eight at first. It's now a six. I do... Still like it, although I am getting sick and tired of it's moving up the board game geek uh, ranking system fast. I think people are very forgiving, though, of the flaws that Dune Imperium has. All right. Mm. <laughs> Forget I'm this whole this argument one. of trying to compare it to Lost Ruins of Arnak or whatever. I'm not interested in that, even though I think yeah. better. But the, uh, <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? It's my stream. But the, the thing is, though, is that this one, I did think quite highly of it when I first played it and then played it a few more times did the review and i'm like yeah this is really cool i'm enjoying it even though i'm not the biggest dune fan you know the new movie bored me but and i have played the gale force 9 version the big one which was fine but it was too long this one i like but i do have issues this worker yeah. placement side of it is pretty basic you've seen it in every game it's nothing particularly new fine combat is okay it's just cubes. I wish it was something more than cubes. I mean, the component quality of this game is not something I shout about, especially the artwork. The art, I mean, this is probably as good as the artwork will ever get, but the artwork on that board is just a, that's so bland and horrific. It's like, eh. it's like, come on, give me something pretty to look at. Oh, yeah. But I'm a deck builder fan. You mentioned like the person who doesn't like deck building. I love deck building. And this whole thing of, oh, I get to use the top, but if I keep the card, I use the bit at the bottom. That sounded cool. Okay, fine. Until you realize that there's not enough time in the game for you to actually do anything interesting with your deck. Right. You basically just buy cards and shove them into your deck and bloat it because this space is like the only half reliable way to cull stuff from your deck. And yeah. even then you don't get to do it very often. That's if you yeah. do that particular bit. But the biggest thing is that a lot of these cards are just garbage. Yeah. You get the tableau of all the cards that are there. And a lot of the times, the same cards get bought every game because they're super good, like the like the Worm Riders or something, like stupidly uh, good for combat. But then anything that's cheaper than, say, three or less credits, I would say, you find that you just don't buy those cards. So they just clog up the display. You could maybe house rule them and they refresh or something, but I just find that I'm buying the same cards all the time. I'm not that interested in the worker placement aspect compared to the, the deck building part and i'm not the biggest dune fan either and i think you do need to be a reasonable fan of dune to get into this even though it looks as bland as it does although let's face it so did the movie so it <laughs> um hey look there's only so much i get from watching deserts okay people have a people rage on star wars for constantly going back to tatooine because of the desert planet well <sighs> desert planet okay it's the same thing um <laughs> So yeah, I waned off it quite quick. I mean, yeah, you know, the I, I I will play it now and again, but I have to realize that right, it's going to be the same cards I buy. It's going to take two hours to play. That's the other problem. I mean, that you know, I thought it was just like, oh, we'll get used to the game and we'll get it done in a quicker time. No, pretty much every game I see that's being played with three or four players takes nearly two hours plus. That's too long. Uh, it's too long for a tidy little deck builder worker place, especially when you've only got to get to ten points. So it's it's not as great as a deck a worker placement as I would normally like, but it's also not as good as a deck builder. And so quickly I started realizing, yeah, I think I was a bit too lenient on this game when I reviewed it. And it's like, ah, one of my slight regrets, as much as a lot of people will, uh, you know, hate on me for either disliking the movie or the game. 
Uh, it does work better solo, you know, than multiplayer, I think. I think the solo was okay, but again, <clears> I don't think I was going to play it. There was absolutely no way I was going to say Ark Nova, James. Come on. I do. I thought you, I thought you were going to say Ark Nova, too. I was totally no with James. <laughs> I gave that game a 10 out of 10, like, at Christmas time. Did, did you? Did you? Oh, yeah, a 10. Yes, I love Ark Nova. Do you think I'm going to wait on that game any time? Fuck, quiet, you. Uh, like, <laughs> uh, really, I like it. I mean, I'll play it. <laughs> oh, I love Ark Nova. I played but, it like six times. We're good. I will say, <laughs> I haven't played this with the expansion. I've got a, I've got a couple of friends in my local group who love this game to bits. Like they are big fans of um, this game, and I have said that I will play this with them if they throw in the expansion to see if it's any better. But it doesn't uh... replace any of the bad cards. It adds more rules, and as far as I can tell, it makes the game longer. So I don't see it like suddenly turning me back to the June side. You know, it's. it's... I I was I've only played this game twice, and it was both times it was. I think once was three players, once was four, um, and I it never clicked for me. So like, I, it, yeah, <laughs> I there, there was no waning. It was like I was like, all right. I mean, so the first game I played, uh, the guy who taught the game, he basically he what are the cards that give you a point? Like he went a big money strategy and he kept buying those cards to give him a point. Like every he was able to buy a car like almost every other turn, um, but it gives you a point and like a spice. But in a 10 point game, when like 40% of his points were those cards, I felt that that strategy was like really like too strong. And then the second game I played, I just basically copied what he did the first game and I crushed. So it was like, <laughs> all right, why is it like, because um, to me, I'm like, oh, look, if you're going to play Clank, right? Like, because obviously the, the DNA is, there's a lot of similarities, at least experientially, for how I experienced the game. Um, like, if I have to buy a tome, it's just a dead card in my deck, and that's mm. fine. In this game, it's like not only am I buying the equivalent of a tome, it's probably actually more because yeah. it's ten percent of your final. Because most of them are, yeah. <laughs> You're also giving me like a benefit too. I was like, that's crazy. Like it just felt like a really like poorly balanced part of the game. But again, I only played two games. I had to play a lot more. Yeah, I wasn't it, playing yeah. with expert gamers. I just by any means. I sort of find that you you go for combat for the really. I mean, you try and oh, do the really? deck building. I find that if you do the deck building part of it you just don't get enough decent cards that turn up because right. you can't tweak your deck. So it just gets bloated and bloated, which is not how I play deck builders. I always try to trim my deck, but combat usually does well. If you've got more troops than the opponents, you're just going to win those right. victory points and benefits each round. And it's just going to yeah. do your favor. So as I say, I, I waned on this one quite quick, but you yeah, know, yeah. I think there's ones that I've waned on a little bit more, but I was tempted to put this mm -hmm. one. In fact, Dad, this almost was going to be like number one or two until I realized, sure. oh yeah, those games. <laughs> so I had to think <laughs> again. Uh, we'll get onto those. Uh, that was four, so freeze. Uh, number three is here. <laughs> I mean, we're just crushing deck builders right now, man. <laughs> number number three is Dominion. And, oh, uh, oh, I still man, like Dominion, but I can understand I, this I one. I don't. Oh, but it's my wife's favorite. It's my wife's favorite game too. So maybe some of my list is just you know internal angst with my wife. <laughs> so, with the so, wrong man. Right, right. <laughs> no, it's it's uh. Here's the thing with Dominion for me. Like number one, I I don't love a lot of the expansions. Right, like I like Seaside enough. I like Prosperity. Um, yeah, intrigue. Seaside sort of Prosperity. Hinterlands is great, and a lesser extent <sighs> guilds. I mean, I've only got those expansions in my set. I don't have any more yeah, than that. But yeah, it, it did get stupid. <laughs> oh, dude, insane. Like, I'll play, like, the online implementation. Like, it was a good game to play. With, I'll play with my wife and her cousins a lot. You know, like, every other month or so. Just kind of. So I'll, I'll still play it. But I just, at some point, it's like, what the heck is happening, dude? <laughs> like, this is stupid. Um, give me more base games. I, intrigue drives me nuts. I just don't like the game where the winning score is minus too like uh that doesn't do much for me um you know some of the randomness like the idea that you're building a deck and it's like the thief comes along and there there goes that gold and i'm like well that seems a little broken like what is <laughs> happening um so i just felt like that the game i've just played it way too much it's probably one of my most played games and i mm. think that's definitely part of it like i'm just i'd rather play something new but um it's fine the other thing that, that i think it was like no pun included, that did a thing about deck builders in general and, like, how satisfying combo building is when you're the one who has the combo, but how, like, non-satisfying it is to watch somebody else 
spend 10 minutes working through a combo. Well, it's that, like that's kind of obvious, though. So. <laughs> that's no, kind of right? obvious, though. That doesn't seem like that's a big revelation, but okay. no, no, no. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, but I think they just put words to it well for me, like where I was like, oh, yeah, and I feel that like big time where it's just like just watching somebody like take five minutes on a turn at dominion because oh draw two cards have three actions draw two i'm like all right you went through your whole deck again and look at you you bought two provinces excellent um <laughs> it's not a like there's a downtime just gets so long depending on how the market's built and yeah it, um, it, it can have some dud just... games i admit i mean this one i'm not as like fast one that's on your list because i mean it's been a while since i've played it i tend to cap it at three players yeah, I, 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 I like the speed of it and this is why i've only got three and a half expansions effectively for it and i would mm. never buy any more because I, I don't want any of the recent stuff that's like complicated it you know it gets too bloated mm. i think using just a couple of expansions and normal dominion oh yeah i've got intrigue as well but that's pretty much just another set of base cards but yes yeah, so it's that i I like throwing together Dominion with people who know what they're doing, and it can happen quite quick. Because even if you do get those power turns, if the person knows what he's doing, it's not taking forever. The worst thing you can do is have somebody who's new to the game with AP yeah, stumble yeah, yeah. upon one of these combos because then you're oh, yeah, yeah. to live. Or well, um, they'll just they'll get the spy. They think the spy is the coolest thing, and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, to be fair, I, <laughs> to be fair, I tend to take him out. Yeah, there are some there are some cards that I will not put in. <laughs> What I, I want to see, I mean, I want to see somebody win with the Chancellor strategy because I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, there are some weird ones, but I try to do something quirky when I play it. But yeah, I mean, this uh, one, it gets, uh, I used to play it a lot. I haven't played it in ages just because right. it's it's in a box. You know, again, this is going to be a recurring theme with these, uh, right. um, with my top two, certainly. And yeah, it's harder to get it out. But if somebody said, like, oh, I want to have a game of Dominion, I'd probably be a little bit bored if they said, oh, let's just play the base set. Mm. But if they said, oh, yeah, I got one or two expansions, let's play a bit of Dominion, you know, I'll be like, damn for it. Because I still, as much as we have ragged a bit on deck builders, Imperium is kind of a hybrid. You're the one ragging on deck builders, I think, more <laughs> overall. Oh, yeah. 100%. And even though, <laughs> even though we're not fully done with it, I still love deck builders in general. You know, it's not just a, but I think maybe with the ones that I've waned on are a type of certain type of deck builder, but I don't know. We'll explain more in that front. All right. So on to my free. Oh God. Yeah. This is a slight cheat um, because it was just one game. And then I realized, well, hang on a minute. I don't, I'm kind of waning off that one as well. And it's like, oh yeah. And I wasn't a huge fan of that. And ah, and, and I realized it's actually a series of games. It's not even just a single game. I'm just starting to get a bit bored. Well, not bored, but tired of this series. And it's it started off with one game. Well, the first game's not even considered one of these, but I bought one big Euro game for the series and thought, okay, cool. This is really enjoyable. I've got it. I've got expansions. The problem is the expansions bloated it. And now it's hard to get to the table because now I can barely teach it. I can't even remember the rules to it. I bought another one in the series, enjoyed it, got it, but I haven't brought it to the table again. And then subsequent ones that have come out, I've either disliked or just gone meh. So it is a bit of a cheat, but I'm talking about the entire T series. Mm. So we're talking Teotihuacan, we're talking Tekenu, we're talking Tabanusi, we're talking all that lot. And Teotihuacan and uh, Tekenu are the ones that I've got. And they're still my two favorites. But here's the biggest problem with them. First, the expansion bloat. Like, this has got so much stuff in it now that I can't even tell what's what. Um, but unlike some of the, like, Lacerda stuff I've got, and some of the other heavy stuff I've got, I mean, I mentioned Dark Nova and a few of the others, those games I feel are more intuitive rules wise. I can use the theme to help teach the game. Um, but these games don't have theme. <laughs> they have a setting and they have boiled this setting to death, you know, all through these games, like recycled the setting over and over again. But they are basically just a collection of mechanics. And I can't remember all these fiddly mechanics that have rules upon rules upon rules where it doesn't necessarily feel like it's a heavy game. It's more like it's a medium game, but with heavy rules. And it's like, well, I've got, he I mean, Spirit Island's a heavy game, but I can learn that a lot quicker than I can learn Teo to Huacon. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you agree on that? I've never played any of them. 
And I mean, I have a friend who has all of them, and we just we always find something else to play. Um, uh, you agree that Spirit Island is not the hardest game to learn for a heavy game? Oh, rules-wise, uh, rules no. The strategy, I think that's one of the interesting about Spirit Island. The rules are pretty, the rule set's pretty small. It's just the, the strategies are really deep. And that's the, but I, say, but I mean, Tekken is another one. I need to update some of these ratings. But, you know, Tekken, who I liked, you know, the, the dice mechanic in it, I enjoyed with the pyramid. But all of the stuff you do around is entirely dry, entirely mechanical. So I haven't played this game in a while. So now if I was to get this game out, I would not be able to remember how to play it because I would have to go through the rules in right. such detail. But I can pick up, like I say, I have not played Spirit Island in the, in the several months. Oh, yeah, I could yeah. pick it up, and I guarantee, other than possibly having to relearn what that rotten, um, uh, what's the one that the Finder of Pass and Seas does? Uh, isolate. <laughs> yeah, apart from having to relearn the Isolate rule again, because I always forget that one, I will be able to instantly play Spirit Island and not have to look at the rule book. But yeah. I cannot do that with any of these T games. And so... Yeah. I haven't bought out Tekenu in a while. I haven't bought out Teotihuacan. And both of them, I think, are great. But they're just such a faff to get out. And the, the T yeah. games after this, I've disliked. I think Taiwan Tinsuyu is overcomplicated garbage. I think uh, Tabanusi was meh. I mean, Paul Grogan and I tried to do the solo thing together. And it was so confusing. We could barely figure out how to play it. Uh, even Origins, technically, it's not a T game. But I think just board and dice are kind of recycling the same hash tag and it's just getting a little bit tiresome now so i don't know if these two are going to stay in my collection much because i can think of better heavy games i'd rather play uh their solo bots are complicated they're not bad solo modes but mm. this is the thing with david turksy david turksy designed mm. some really clever solo modes unfortunately he's more cleverer than i am <laughs> you know mm. he's, uh, these are a bit too clever for me where i'm piloting piloting the ai takes more time than my own turn when that happens, I wane off your solo mode. Right. I mean, are you no, a similar thing? Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, like, I this like I think the closest thing I've played solo um would be anachrony solo mode, and I just Ooh. bounced off that really hard. Yeah, I mean I love but, anachrony the game, but we play it uh, multiplayer, three or four player multiplayer with a group of friends, always. I tried the solo bots, both versions of them, uh, and it's too much faff. Yeah, I mean, I put I put both versions on the channel. I mean, I I enjoyed it, but I was like, yeah, it's it's not my. It felt like work and a chore, <laughs> more than the games I prefer to play. So I was just like, yeah, this isn't for me um, at all. And the crazy Anachrony, I almost bought the big box at one point. I was like about to be all in on Anachrony, and I ended up borrowing I've, a friend's copy. I've got the big box, but again, I mean, I, we like Anachrony, so I can remember the rules of that. But I don't throw yeah. in the mini expansions occasionally oh, yeah, we yeah. might play with fractures but even i'm thinking yeah why didn't i just keep the base game because it just gets i think games are just getting too bloated rules wise and yeah, it's yeah. starting to get on my nerves and you know teoti Huracan was a sacred cow for a bit but then every expansion i bought just complicated it even further and now yeah. i'm like why do i have these expansions because it's not like i'm going to be able to teach them with the expansions right uh and how do we pronounce the hard <laughs> it's the hard yeah the hard is it actually, actually the, it's the hard yeah. Yeah, I used to say Dahan, and then I was corrected. <laughs> it's Dahan. You know, I mean, you know, Jacob reflects here and that. If you know, check out the Perseverance review I did. I make a big deal about the solo mode and that being too much faster yeah, yeah, pilot, yeah. just like a lot of them. The only people who will come out and defend it, I guarantee, are the ones who literally live and breathe that level of complexity. Like, you know, they mm. go to sleep reading and dreaming about the rule books that they read. And they're mm. the ones that will claim that Perseverance is a medium weight game. <laughs> Screw you, I'm afraid. No, sorry. Man. I'm sorry. You know, that I always make a big deal about people's opinions on uh, game weight being skewed as gamers. Because oh yeah, yeah, they are. 100%. It's so hard. I feel like I'm in a pretty good state of what's heavy, what's like gateway, but you know, toot my own horn a bit, but but I feel a lot of people are like anything lower than you know Twilight Imperium and Anachrony is considered a kid's game to them. It's yeah, just yeah. no, no, for you, yes, but you're an experienced gamer. Let's think about you know Joe Bloggs around the corner. So yeah, it did, didn't work for me. Anyway, I've rabbited on too long about that. But yeah, basically the T series of games, board and dice, do something different. Win me over with Nightmare Cathedral, that'd be cool. Uh, 
Oh, come on. two. It's my turn yeah, now. You. <laughs> I should speak. Did you not see the flashy numbers? <laughs> I, I need more coffee, man. This is going on. All right. Uh, number two. It's only four o'clock or something in the I afternoon know. for you. What are you I, talking I, about? I, I do need more coffee. It's like... <laughs> um, number two for me is... Uh, I'm getting kind of the sacred cow territory, I think. Uh, is terraforming Mars. I am kind of so over terraforming Mars. I'm cool with that. <laughs> like, I, I'm cool with that. Like, oh my gosh. And I used to love this game. The, my biggest problem with Terraform Mars is that the more experience with that game that you get, the longer the games take because the best strategies are point chasers generally. And that's playing a two, mm-hmm. I think with four, it's less so because like there's so much happening that the terraforming happens relatively quick. But my wife and I, we would play and then it's all of a sudden we're both chasing points where neither of us are terraforming much. And all of a sudden you have a four hour game and we have insanely high scores, but it just takes too freaking long <laughs> to get to the end game. Um, and at that point, I mean, plus like you have, you look, you can do drafting with tell us, but some of the randomness of the card draw and the research phase is kind of yeah. But then it adds like lot. another like hour to the game. Right? Yeah, so the drafting adds a lot more time. So like, yeah, there's just a lot about that game where I'm like, this was really fun and really important to my gaming group for a long time, and now it's like I will still play it, but don't we have something better? <laughs> And Arc Nova yeah. hasn't helped. It's now I'm like, oh, please give me Arc Nova. Arc Nova's a half hour too long for what it is, in my opinion. But I would still, it's you know, two hour Mars yeah. is like an hour and a half too long for what it is. So yeah. you know, it's a it's a different scale. Arc, I mean, Nova plus, like, is, Arc, Arc Nova is long. I mean, I'll get I'll, I'll yeah. give it that one. I mean, I love playing that one so long. I guarantee I'll try and get that one on the channel if I yeah. can. But the uh, terraform Mars yeah, goes on for too long too i mean freaking long man it's like uh, by the time you get to these like three bits i'm like we've been playing this for only, like two hours plus ever. and we're not even like halfway up some of these tracks dude it's crazy ridiculous. it's crazy and then you have i mean the expansions like i played turmoil once oh my god that was hot no. garbage um no, I, played, I will I, not touch that i'm not no, touching turmoil it is hot garbage. I was so not impressed with Turmoil. Uh, Prelude's great. Obviously, throw it in. It yeah. helps. But, like, it's I mean, the rest of yeah. it, I don't need Venus, and I don't need this. And, I mean, the, the double-sided board looks interesting. I played on that once. That's fine. They're, they're not that, it's not an interesting setup, though. I mean, the, the <laughs> double-sided board is just it's just this blank planet, except the bonuses are in slightly different places. Right. That's pretty much all the extra maps do. Yeah. But, yeah, the... Yeah, it, it does take ages for this game to play. And it's, you know, it's not that the game mechanics themselves aren't fun. It just outstays its welcome so yeah. fast because it is eventually yeah. a heavy drafting game. But then the drafting goes on over and over again. And, over. and if you don't yeah. get the cards that you need for your corporation or your starting strategy, right. it's difficult to pull it back. I mean, if I've got the corp that allows me to plant trees and you don't give me a single green card in the game, what am I supposed to do then? It's... Right. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's bad. It's rough. It's Prelude's really rough. essential. Throw it in because it quickens the time and differentiates you at setup. I think that's a brilliant expansion. You know, I will give it credit. Colonies is okay, but it undoes the the same time thing that Prelude sorted. So it just adds more time. Venus is entirely pointless. Because right. you barely use that track. I used it in the last game I played with Venus just because I wanted to finally use the wretched <laughs> thing. Um, and you know, the rest of the cards aren't that interesting. So and Turmoil, what were they thinking? It's like, how can we make oh, this man. like two and a half to three hour game longer? Oh, it's it's so like, bad. come on. I yeah. think Turmoil itself, I think there's like a 15 steps i think in the turmoil rules it's like here are the 15 steps and it's every round <laughs> i mean some of them are just up like you know stupid housekeeping stuff but still oh. it's 15 steps <laughs> like it's crazy that, that hurts my brain to think of that it's crazy <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't help the fact that arc nova now exists i mean i was right. already i disliked terraforming Mars when i first played it i actually disliked it eventually it warmed up a bit more for me like i thought and that's not a pun for the game but you know it, it warmed up slightly Yeah, you know, i got it to right. five six out of ten and i thought you know what i'll play it and i have played it once or twice in the last few years and had good times with three of us who know what we're doing with the game so that the ap is done and they've also said oh we're only playing with prelude it's like great and right. the app's pretty good but then art nova has come out and it's completely obliterated this game. <laughs> it's like, why would I play this over and over? It's just not. Dude, I saw, I saw some guy who's like, 
<laughs> he's like, there's always, there's always that guy, right? In these Facebook groups, he's like, the two games are nothing alike. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what planet you're from, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, but, well, they, yeah, but that's just the fanboys going like, "Oh, we're defending my beloved game." It's like, I, fine, you love the game, but the facts are staring you in the face, mate. You know, you might have to accept that this isn't just, you know, a peer oh, pressure man. thing. I mean, you are the whole crux of Terraforming Mars is what you do with those cards: collect the yeah. tags, get the symbols, cue loads of special effects, and right, you build right. tiles on the map. What do you do with Ark Nova? All of those things. The only difference right. is that the map isn't communal. And I get it if that's the tipping point. So, you know, you go like, all right, fine. You know, I like the communal map. But honestly, the communal map is just basically a case of, right, I've built a city. Can someone please build trees next to me or there or vice right. versa? The water sure. has to go where it's fixed. Whoopee. And nobody builds on any space where it doesn't get you a bonus. So honestly, the map, the communal map's kind of pointless, really. It doesn't really add that much to the game. It's certainly my least favorite aspect of terraforming mars i'm more in it for the cards right and art nova gives me that in a better package so yeah i ain't got no problems with you shoving down your list <laughs> but i couldn't put it on my list though because i didn't warm up to it enough to cool down right. and i can't really say i would have cooled down on terraforming mars it's just something has straight up replaced it and right. none of the games on my list are down to something has just replaced it because that's not so much cooling down on it. It's just now been obsolete, which is kind right. of the worst thing. Okay, sure. so... Um, uh, yeah, I keep saying as we'll get out quite a bit. I don't know where I picked <laughs> up my phrase from. I hear it off some like comedy shows, maybe, or something, and then I, it's stuck with me. But, righty, my number two is... Where is my number two? Oh, God, yes. You remember what I talked about big boxes? This isn't even the largest box out of the next two, but I still like this game. I'll still play it, but I don't tend to get two players to the table often. This works best at three. Four player, it's way too chaotic and too long. But I now, this started off as a nice cube-shaped box. Fairly small, a few decks of cards, easy to teach, pretty simple. I probably should have stuck with that. Because being a completionist, which I was more at that time, I'm not so much now, I bought box after box after box of expansions and now i have the giant geeky box of this stuff and oh christ yeah you know what i might have overdone it with smash up um <laughs> so the i still think the game is good but i've now got way too much content for this thing <laughs> and bloating a game i think actually does more harm to it than negative and so i wouldn't know which two factions to pick which ones are easier for new players than not. But I also, as I said, only want to play this with three player because two players I don't play that often anyway and four players of this is way too long and chaotic. I still somehow manage to find people who can't understand the simple concept of these cards. I mean, for uh, you may destroy a minion of power two or less on this base. That is a pretty self-explanatory ability when you know the basics of the game. And I can still get people that get confused by it. So it's like, mm. you know, I can't help you now. But... Four players, it just gets too much. You've got all these different bases, and you need stuff printed off BGG to help track the power on those bases. Otherwise, it becomes a bit of an arithmetic nightmare to constantly do it. So it has that problem again. But yeah, I'm not bringing out this massive box down there to a game night just for Smash Up. I mean, I could feasibly do it more so than my number one. We'll get on to that. But yeah, this one just ends up with the problem of maybe just being a bit too bloated for its own good. Sure. Yeah, I never played it. I've heard of it. Definitely heard you, of it. You never played this one. It's no. I mean, it's a simple concept. You know, grab two decks, smash them together, and smash them together. You know, hence yeah. the name. And there's your deck. And it's funny to have something like alien cyborg apes, or you know, time traveling, you know, ninjas, and you know, and various other weird combinations. But yeah, I've just got too much i mean it is basically as thomas says actually that's probably a good description it's basically the gamer step up from munchkin um you know it is possible to king make a little bit but i haven't had that too much it's just i've gotten there's no solo mode that doesn't help <laughs> i feel like a solo mode could be done but <laughs> that's just gonna be his one there but yeah it, it's just too it's just too bloat it's it's light it's a light game it's not difficult and with free players it's still a fun game and i will play it but why do i have a box this big with this many cards in there. I got to a point 
where I actually stopped buying the expansions. And this happened with my number one as well. I reached a point where I stopped being a completionist and thought, Luke, what are you doing? Why are you, bu why are you grabbing this stuff when you don't play the game often enough to justify it? And man, those were some of the best decisions I ever made. Because <laughs> mm. I, I don't even own all of Smash Up. And I still have this big geeky box. You can now get the even bigger geeky box. <laughs> it's like, mm. that says it all, really. I mean, have you had one? Have you had a game go because of you bloated it too much and kind of regret doing it? I mean, the only game I regret bloating right now is Arkham. <laughs> that's fair. Actually, yeah, you said Arkham. You said you bought... I mean, yeah, that's getting quite big. So is Marvel Champions, you know. I mean, deck I building just work. got... Yeah, deck building and Arkham got stupid. Like, I mean, it's just... <laughs> there's too many... I, so many cards are unnecessary, man. Like, I, I just... I want to yeah. go back and, and just have... Just give me up through Forgotten Age... And then never give me another investigator card. And I think yeah. I would enjoy the game more. I've got a similar thing with um, Magic the Gathering. Because I used to play that a lot at uni, even though I met some crazy people. Could blind me with Magic. But I had a death threat from someone for beating them in a, in a university tournament. I kid you not with Magic. Uh, it's like, ouch. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the, that seems um, reasonable. <laughs> well, he'd, he'd been used to being one of the top two players there or something. And then I came by and beat him elves... Was it my elves versus his goblins or something? Was it really? no, <laughs> other way around? <laughs> goblins versus elves. This was when Legion came out, and I just um, I, I beat him. It was a fun game. I right. mean, it was down to the wire, but right. man, I mean, you know, once I beat him, I was like, oh yeah, great. But then he was like going absolute mad. I just thought, what on earth is going on, dude? It's uh, crazy. I I've only played Magic once, if you can believe it. <laughs> Uh, that that is the first time I've been getting the spam bot. I must admit, I've not had that on any other collab, so I am a little bit concerned about that. But it's me, I man. Have... I, I bring it with me. <laughs> Maybe I mean, <laughs> I might have to take uh, I might have to take James's advice and say if it if it becomes a future problem, I might have to say. Uh, maybe like i do make the live chat just for subscribers or something i'd hate to do yeah, it but yeah. if it's the only way to stop spam bots i may have to deal with it but right. we'll see anyway but yeah that's uh right number ones the big ones and i do mean big quite literally so mine's not that big but <laughs> it looms large in the solo world i'll tell you that much and it much to my uh disappointment Mage Knight, Mage Knight, Mage Knight, Mage Knight. no god no. no i love maze night more and more every month dude i i really do like that game is it's well, so solo good, mode doing, uh too many bones no i also love too many bones although i didn't love learning either of the chip oh, did not learn like, it yeah oh god it was awful but um yeah, so this game was like a, a big lesson for me in don't make your top 10 list. You don't put a game in your top 10 list before you really experienced it because uh, I was super hyped about it. And I was like, this is super cool. And then I was like, eh. And then I realized there was a rule I was I was doing wrong. And I was like, oh, it's like super cool again. And then I played more of the content in the base game. I was like, this is utter garbage. And I don't understand the love for it. And well, I don't. I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't sound like you cooled on it, though. Oh, <laughs> it like I hated it. I I liked I don't I mean it was the top ten game for me for sure like I I uh, I I cooled on it as I went through the more of the base game but because like, there's like just a scenario base game the first couple scenarios like oh this is great it's like uh uh what <laughs> this is so stupid and then it just made right. me like really dislike the beginning part of it uh, but that's Robinson Crusoe uh, the board game which Ooh. I really like that one but really I detest. can see where you I can see where you're coming from I can see I, where you're coming from. But I've I've softened in my utter disdain of it, but I'm still <laughs> radically cool from where I started. In that I see it now kind of as a game that if you want to get it, treat it like an escape room game. Play each scenario until you beat it and just sell it, man. Because it just the replayability <laughs> for me is not there on any level. Ooh. I find that game got, when you I've, know what you're got, doing. It's got a decent amount of replay value. Right? I mean, there's a lot of different oh, scenarios. There's seven scenarios in the base game. I haven't played the expansions. I find two and a half of them good. And I find the rest of them so on rails. Like, when you know what you're doing, the action economy is so tight that it's like there's not a lot of room for player creativity. It's like, this is what you have to do. 
hope you roll good enough to do it. And if you don't roll good enough early, just start over. Because it's, 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 there is no coming back. There is no like, oh, I'll find these other two actions. Like, and the best part is like you, the, <laughs> the way like the the loot deck, the treasure deck, like trolls you. It's like, hey, you got gold. <laughs> you got gold, but it's useless. So who cares? Um, there's so many things about that game I just absolutely grew to despise and i like hard games i like games that i'm gonna lose as much as if i win mm. uh you know in a lot of ways like i'll that's why i keep jacking up difficulty levels because i i want that challenge this <laughs> game is hard not in a way i like because it's just so unbelievably punishing without giving me any mm. chance of getting the tools i need to actually succeed it's just it all is, about how can yeah, you roll it, if you if you roll good the, throughout you'll win if you don't roll good forget it you're done it is, like I said, I mean, I've, I've probably, it's dropping for me, but I mean, we're talking dropping from like a nine to an eight or something. I still really enjoy the game. Mine's not so much the challenge, because I usually accept that it's one of those games a bit like Ghost Stories. You're just going to lose right. 90% of the time. But it's one of those like board games that tell stories. I get into the theme and, it, you know, you have fun while doing it, even if there's a high likelihood you will lose it. Um, the main issue that makes it drop a little bit for me is mostly because the intro scenario is actually one of the hardest scenarios in the game, uh, which is hard. annoying. It's I've one never... of the two scenarios I like, yeah. though. <laughs> I've never got to the point where I've gamed a scenario, though. I mean, I've usually found that ch changing up the inventions and trying a different character or, or just seeing what stuff comes out, you know, doesn't necessarily put any of the scenarios on rails for me. I think the, the that's more true with the later ones for sure. Like Family Robinson is super on rails. I mean, like just the ones where the actual economy is so I beat crazy. that one the first time. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Good. Yeah. God, God bless, dude. I think my live playthrough of that was like 20 minutes long because I bear ate me pretty early. <laughs> but the uh, it's more the rule book that doesn't help it because as much as they've tried, they've never come up with a decent rule book. I'm mm -hmm. hoping that this new version they've done, which, like I said, I did back it because I still enjoy the game, hey. but I'm curious to see what this tutorial does, whether it makes the rules stick in my head more or it allows me to teach new players it a bit easier. We'll see. Um, but yeah, the we'll see how that goes. But yeah, the intro one is the building the signal fire. Hey. And yeah, hey. the, you cannot afford the things to go wrong in that one. No. So it's in it's any still, of them. Well, true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like I say, there's a little bit more leeway and some of the others or a bit more stuff to help you but what the signal fire one is like it's all focused on this one thing and you need it for several things and it just makes right. it really really hard and yeah i kind of agree actually yeah this war of mine does a better job for giving me this oh god oh god we're all gonna die co-op thing <laughs> right challenging. so yeah I, this war of mine does eclipse robinson crusoe for me good castaways is good that's the first scenario i like um i mean good relative to the rest of it because i have a very low opinion of the rest of it and i think the you volcano cool, island, it's a, this is so much no. cool to me did you literally like just step into the shower and then jump straight out <laughs> like, oh dude no like the, pretty much yeah i mean that's that's about that sounds about a good analogy i was like oh this is great i was like oh this is terrible <laughs> i was like i was like this I, is I great it's scolding me yes yeah, it's, like, it's so that, like it just wasn't interesting enough because like, again i'm comparing it to like spirit island or maze night or uh, deeper games that just give you more room for like player choices like, i don't think mm -hmm. there's much of a choice space in robinson crusoe like what you need to do is pretty obvious scenario to scenario it's just like how do those dice come down you know uh, and those it'd be too obvious i mean there's usually a lot of different oh, things you can do it's just a case of which one's probably first maybe i get sucked into the story yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this one this one i don't yeah i haven't got as big a problem with this because i can see why people would wane off it for various you, reasons so i mean even if you take like i mean i had never played ghost stories i have last bastion i love last bastion by the way i think that's really i love good. i love ghost stories i won't get last bastion because i prefer the anime ghost the theme, theme. Yeah, 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 but, yeah yeah i mean last bastion i'm sure would enjoy i'd enjoy just as much frankly i think it's just a theme thing but, but i think somebody said like yeah it's easier to table like ghost story i mean yeah it's easy to table and oh, i find compared the to robinson space, Crusoe, yeah <laughs> i find Although, the decision space like really interesting i find like the differentiation mm. of the warlords and stuff like, really interesting i just find like a, a much more well, engaging ghost, game well ghost story it's, it's an easier, easier game overall oh, yeah, lightweight, to get to the table sure. but then it's still still got a very hard rule book i mean it's oh, a yeah, lightish yeah, yeah. game that tries to be as tries to be a heavy rule book so it's a bit problematic but that yeah i've still got that down there it hasn't hit the table in a long time though i might have to sort that out yeah but now i can see this one right number one. Oh boy <laughs> um <laughs> a spin-off of this i still like but i haven't even got that one to the table much and a lot of this problem is not just well in this case it's bloat 
but also setup. Games with long setups are starting to drag me down a bit as well. But this mm. one was another one. Like with Smash Up, I bought expansion after expansion after expansion after expansion and kept going and going and going. Not realizing that getting this giant box crate thing off my shelf, which is this custom made thing, it's super heavy. It's like a pain to sort through the cards and that. And I realized that the main reason I was buying it is because I love superheroes. The problem is, is that that can only get me so far when it takes me about an hour to set up every game of Marvel Legendary. I do like the game still, but Sentinels of the Multiverse will always whoop, will always dwarf it. And this one has one of the worst setups that you have to do. I mean, the Alien one's not much better in this regard, but I like the Alien theme, and that one's a bit easier to do. But this one, I still enjoy the game, but I just can't be bothered to get it out of the box because <laughs> you've got to first. I mean, what have you got to do with this? It's already quite a punishing game because the difficulty curve has got to stupid levels by now. But you have got to get five heroes together, smash them all together, shuffle them all up. Well, that takes forever, right? Then you got to get the villain deck. Right. You got to find out what villain you're doing. Now get his schemes. Now get the master schemes. Now get the villains. Now get these uh, bystanders and a few other bits. Right. Now shuffle all them together and make sure they're shuffled well. Then get going. Game might be done within about 30 minutes or so. It's not a long game. And then you realize you've got to separate all these rotten cards out again and pack it away. And I'm just like, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> why don't I just go play Sentinels of the Multiverse? It's a lot easier. And it's happened with, I, I can't remember what the other game, advantage. I mean, we mentioned Zeon's End, um, similar deal, deck build, well, the deck build aside, it's, I like, Empires of the North and things like that, I love just getting my own deck. Street Masters, you mentioned earlier, same sort of deal, just give me a, let me choose a hero, give me the deck, and I don't have to mess around with it. Right. Imperial Settlers actually is going off my shelf because Empires of the North's deck system kills imperial settlers because now with all the expansions you have to deck build partially in it no i haven't got time for that you know ain't nobody got time for that so i'm not i'm just not willing to do it as much as i love marvel and i think that's the main reason i kept going with this because i love marvel so i wanted to get the x-men i wanted to get the hulk box i wanted to get a lot of these others and they are fun i mean i love the boxes they've been great i love the secret wars one and a couple of there was it the Infinity War one? I think there was one or something like that. And the X Men, you know, there were some really good box sets. But that crate weighs a ton. I'm not going to mess around with the setup anymore. But now I don't know, even know how to sell it because it comes right. in that giant too big. box. So what am I supposed to do? It, I don't know. It just kind of uh, got to that point of just being too much faff. And that can kill a game as yeah. much as I would enjoy a game. I'll play it. But can someone else set it up, please, while I go grab myself a drink? Maybe some sandwich, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's like all these these card games, like, there's just so much content. I mean, it's the same, like, a, 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 a. I mean, it's like, why I don't need seven waves of this crap, dude. <laughs> like, just <laughs> give me two good ones and call it a day. Like, Yeah, some expansions were better than others, and I think the small box ones were better than the big, but you just end up with so yeah. many cards. And yes, okay, I've got a million heroes, but I don't know which ones i'm gonna pick and then again i just don't want to set the game up now even if i could sell the marvel one out of there i don't know how i'm supposed to sell it but uh, i would probably maybe still keep alien because alien just had one expansion uh, and that was it and as much as you've got a bit of setup in that it's a very good game i do love the alien theme um but yeah i would much rather play marvel champions because you know you do a little bit of deck uh, building but i can just pull a deck off the internet and play it Whereas, you know, with Sentinels, again, I just literally grab a deck from the box and it's done. It is done. And I think mm -hmm. nowadays, again, as I mentioned, adult life sucks. We don't have enough time on our hands yeah. to do everything we want to do. The last thing I want, as I said in the Perseverance review, is to spend, you know, three hours reading the rule book, or well, two hours setting up a game <laughs> or right. four hours playing one. It's getting to that point. Alien has right. two expansions. Did it? I know it had the queen one. What was the other one it had? Oh, yeah, it had a tiny box one or something like that. Oh, whatever. Okay, it had two, but it didn't feel bloated. It stopped. It knew when yeah. to stop. <laughs> now, I, I never played any of the legendary games. They're, they're definitely something I need to fix at some point. Um, but I mean, they're, they're, I mean, as a deck builder genre, I mean, I'm assuming they're pretty similar to 
all the rest. <laughs> well, this was one of the um, what you got like the earlier deck builders. Right. So this was like DC deck building time, where it was mainly just a case of here's a bunch of cards, let's just shove them together. Because because I mean the theme to tracks in Marvel Energies as well, because you are just piling them all together, and you might collect all sorts of heroes when you play. You're not necessarily mm -hmm. you know Marvel Champions gets the the vote because I can say I am Captain America. This right. is my Captain America deck. <laughs> you know, I don't suddenly have f half a dozen other Avengers running around. Uh, but then also, double O, you know, you mentioned 007 Legendary. Yeah, it started jumping the shark at one point where it's like, now we're going to just put the word Legendary on front of everything. I've got Firefly Legendary in there. Now, I love the TV series, cancelled way ahead of its time, but man, the Firefly Legendary looks like trash. <laughs> the artwork in it is mm -hmm. some of the most like, unapologetic artwork you can possibly come across. It's like, the person who did that art deserves to change their career path. It's so bad. Yeah, that's what's up. But that, that's so, I mean, I'd still love deck builders. I mean, but I, maybe I'm... I mean, I still like Dominion. I still like Star Realms. still like Valley of the Kings. And they are pure deck builders. And I do prefer a pure deck builder. But then I'm also liking these <laughs> ones like Runestones and things like that. So, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Oh, my little no. pony. <laughs> yeah. There's a. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. The, the 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 deck builder I just started getting into, but I mean I only have like the first expansion. And I'm pretty good with that. Is a uh, shards. I like shards a lot. Shards right, of Infinity. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice okay, little yeah. quick like filler. It's like me and a friend waiting for somebody else. Take it out. 15, 20 mm. minute little deck builder skirmish thing yeah it's just, i mean games can get too bloated i mean marvel champions is going to get too bad because they are just uh, like they are kind of releasing the expansions a bit too fast and now we're really fast so, i mean it's like yeah great give me you know give me four fantastic give me doctor strange fantastic give me some x-men finally fantastic but right. we could have had the x-men long before we need spider ham and spider or whatever the the two like spin-off <laughs> ones they're doing the robot one. It's like, yeah, I love them in Spy in Into the Multiverse. Great movie, but I didn't need to have decks for them. Yeah, you know, so it's kind of like I, slow down yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get asked a lot about because I have, I mean, obviously all of Arkham that's been produced to date. Um, but it's like, oh, do you have Marvel? Like, no. Do you have Lord of the Rings? No. Like, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't have the space in life for another LCG. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you I, do all three. So I, I marvel at your commitment. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, I mean, even I have to think. Oh, maybe I have to rethink it. The thing is, I've got three, but I haven't played Lord of the Rings LCG in a long time. But uh, I haven't cooled on it. I still love the game, but it's just the fact that I can't find the time to play it. But right. uh, Lord of the Rings LCG has stopped making content. because now Did it's they? They, they yeah, stealed it. That's what's up. Yeah, it's now finished. All they're doing is making like the second edition sort second of like, edition, like the, the, the repackaged version. So you get all, right. the, all the cycles in one box, which is brilliant. Great idea, but I've already got the content. There's nothing new. So right. I can hang on to L Lord of the Rings LCG, not buy another pack, and I'm good. But yeah, Arkham Horror is going that route. I mean, I a new cycle comes out, and I make an effort to play through the whole cycle, and then it might be a while before I play it again. Marvel Champions is a bit easier because it's scenario-based, and I think it's, I would say, scenarios are easier to play than campaigns. I'm just starting to get sick right. and tired of everything being a campaign. You know? Right. <laughs> no, gonna be? That's, that's fair. Um, that's honorable fair. mentions, I mentioned, I, I mentioned to carry on, I'm cooling on it. I haven't cooled, but I mentioned I did a big Instagram post with my thoughts on that after the last game I played. And it's a bit like what I said with Coliseum. You've got to find out what trick you're going for at the very end, work your way back. And if something goes wrong in that game, you're done. Like you cannot catch up. There is not a single catch up mechanism in that game. And my taste in heavy games is getting to that point where I kind of don't like pseudo knockout much. Uh, bang the dice game. I thought nah, I'd still play that, but we used to play it like every week, and now I haven't brought it out in a while. Villagers, but then I thought I was never massive on villagers from Sinister Fish before, so probably not as much. I think the two main ones of honorable mentions were Dice City and Dream Home because Dream Home I still play and I still own, but it's been a while since I've brought that out because it's not quite gateway level, um, and people haven't necessarily requested it. Dice City was definitely a cool one. I bought that with all the expansions of Engine, and I thought this is a really cool, quirky dice game, and then realized that I'm only playing it occasionally solo, and if you play it with three or four players, you are there until the end of time, 
waiting for this game to end. It's like ah, and eventually got rid of it. <laughs> right. How about you? Any others? Any others? What did make your list? Um, yeah, I mean, I play a lot less games than you. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, yeah, I didn't have, I, I, I didn't have a much to choose from. I mean, games that, you know, I mean, there's a lot of games I want to like more than I do, and there's games that like I love. But I feel like on most games, like, you know, I I tend to be a guy who warms up to a game more than who loves a game and then wanes. You know, they're like my all my favorite games took me a while to warm up. The Spirit Island was like I was kind of lukewarm on for a while, and then I just really grew to love it. Now it's my number one. I mean, Maze Night, mm-hmm. it was like you get through that arduous process of learning rules in some of these games, you know, even Arkham, like, you know, I was started like really low. Then it was my favorite game. And then it was like, now it's kind of back to eight. Um, but uh, I mean, there's definitely games that have put a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, like I love legends of the dark. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great. Oh, yeah. But uh, the, the end few scenarios, like kind of, it's like, Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> this is a really I weird design I've... choice. Oh, I mentioned the artist for Firefly Legendary used to change their career path. So did the writers for Legends of the Dark. That was a <laughs> horribly written campaign. It, yeah, it was. It was a lot. It was terrible writing. <laughs> yeah, people were ragging um, on like some of the Disney Plus stuff. I was like, I'm sorry, that stuff was yeah, worse. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it, I, I've not called on rolled and rights. I was never a massive fan of them in the first place. I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. the genre of being bloated. Yeah, um, it's a lot. The Alon extended party content for Lord of the Rings LCG. I don't quite know what you mean by that, but if you're talking about like epic multiplayer stuff, not a massive fan of that. I've done some of the Arkham ones, but no, I wouldn't do it for Lord of the Rings. Uh, Trickery on Cool Games. Yep, definitely. Everyone else is too hyped for every game. So uh, yeah, I'm certainly the one that isn't uh... just there to destroy hype for the sake of destroying hype. But yeah, there's there's got to be some of it. I mean, Viticulture World I just reviewed recently and, you know, I like it. But it's not nine out of ten, ten out of ten, like uh, the previewers all kept saying. The ones who Stonemire give review copies to in advance, because they all were basically uh, saying this is a fascinating game. It's amazing. No flaws with it. It's like um, I have questions. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, yeah. you know. Unfortunately, it just took me two months to get the game and actually play it myself. So, <laughs> no, it, it is funny. Like I don't know why. You know, I feel like it, it, board games like that space, like everyone like hates on everything, but like board games that has there's so much more love for some of these games that I'm like, I don't understand <laughs> like <laughs> what is happening. Even games I like, yeah. I mean, I like Return to Dark Tower, but like you talk to some people and it's like the greatest game of all time. Like it's it's nostalgia fine. goggles for that one. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's there's thousands and thousands of games, so I don't get why it's easy for these hyped ones to be yeah. the only ones there because there's some hidden gems yeah. there that i come across that right. i think oh yeah these are great and i would have never heard of them before but yeah there's thousands and thousands of games they can't all be great yeah. <laughs> it's it's a cult of the new thing and i would definitely say i'm kind of balanced you know i some new games i like but then i'm still trying to find like you know el grande and road to el dorado and a few of these other little older games and i'm like you know what i'd like to play these at some point right. a friend of mine wanted to bring a choir to the last game night we had or something mm-hmm. and it's like i don't know if i'll like the game but it's a 1960s game you know what i'll try it yeah. <laughs> see what happens sure but it's it's getting to that point and taste change and certainly i think games are now so obsessed with throwing everything in the kitchen sink into them yeah, you know, yeah. with campaigns, five expansions, <laughs> call many or not. Um, you know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. overpricing them like crazy. And I'm not into that anymore. You know, if another campaign comes out for Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle Earth, part of me is gonna be like, Oh, I love this game, I'll get it. But then part of me is also like, do I need another one? <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, I don't I don't need content to come out forever. If a game eventually flies off my shelf because I've played it to death and there's no further content i'll feel good about that because i'll mm. at least have got my money's worth but not like something like smash up or you know marvel legend where i felt like i was getting the expansions just for the sake of getting the expansions yeah. that's the last thing you want like the completionist syndrome is what to avoid yeah yeah no, I mean, that, yeah arkham's again like the the one i mean I, for me like i was done I really wanted the theme of Innsmouth, so I was like, I'm, that's my last cycle, but Innsmouth was so good, and then I was like super intrigued by the new model, but I definitely regret getting it to the earth. Like, mm. I, I don't need this. Um, here's another one. It's Nemesis. Have you played that one yet? No! My friend was supposed to buy it, but he <laughs> forgot to fill out his pledge manager, so like, 
I, instead of me having it in my house, and I was because I was planning to get it on the channel like this year, but like uh, now we're yeah. we're in a waiting pattern where he might be able to get it post production now, but we'll see. It, um, I'd say it's worth I, trying, but but what um, SJV says there is actually true because I've played it yeah. solo and I've got it, and I went completionist on the whole thing because I thought that's a right. very good deal for all that content. I'll give it a shot. I like it. But yeah, it does feel like it's better multiplayer because solo right. does feel quite repetitive because you are mainly just running around hoping the alien doesn't come by and try and get your objective done. Sure. Whereas the stories don't really develop unless you play it multiplayer. But even then, I only want to cap it at three players because Nemesis goes on forever. Uh, so yeah. even I'm starting to think, yeah, should I have really bought that? <laughs> you know, that's almost uh, a Kickstarter regret. But I don't know. I'll try and get it out to the table a bit more with some multiplayer and we'll see. But I don't think I... I don't think I rose to a height to say that cooled. I think that's just more like I'm giving it a shot and it's not working as well as I would like. Is it like going to Spirit Island? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. I don't think I've ever um, played an Awakened Realms game, which is nuts. But... Well, I've still got Tainted Grail um, downstairs and I've still got one and a half, like, yeah, a couple of campaigns to play out of that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. you know, I love that game and I'm going to play those campaigns. Once I'm done with this journey to middle earth, I hope to get the tainted uh, grail one. That I haven't played the prequel one. Um, I forget what it's called, but the, yeah, the prequel one in that box out, but I hope to God, they don't release any more tainted grail campaigns. because uh, Actually, no, they are, aren't they? They are. Yeah. They announced, oh, okay. I, I don't know when it's going to, yeah. it's on game found, I think. And that's like, the thing. In a couple I'm just of like, yeah, more content. And I'm just like, Oh, I haven't even got these two campaigns done. Do I need uh, more? <laughs> so I just got... I've heard that's another game though. Like it's it the grind is is like uh, maybe not seventh continent bad, but I've heard it can be pretty bad. It is a grind, but I house rule it where it minimizes that a bit. Um, right. Because Tainted Grail is one of those ones where this would be an interesting top ten video actually. Kickstarter regrets. I wonder if I can... <laughs> um because there's certainly a few, but the with Tainted Grail, I love it for the story. You know, contrast that to something like Legends of the Dark. Tainted Grail has a really good story, a really good writing right. in it. And it's right. got a great, gritty, dark setting. Again, this war of mine, sick person I am. I like these dark, gritty settings. Right. Um, but the the problem is, yeah, the rules, if you just go from the rule book, are very grindy. And they made the same problem with Fields. I've introduced a couple of house rules to make it better. And so I can enjoy the game more. You just have to accept that you're going to have to do some design tweaks that they didn't bothered to put in themselves which is a right. shame and takes it out of being like you know excellent in a sense but the same, least, i'm, I'm, I'm the, there with dark tower yeah. for sure but Some i'm the, the only one to play but as i say yeah. i'm i'm the only one to play it so if i've got a house rule it i don't really care too much you know it's a solo co-op campaign game i can do what i like as long as it makes it more enjoyable and so right. it is but yeah <sighs> grindiness is something that awakened realm seem to do in a lot of their games i've noticed yeah Although said like, oh, updating the second edition to help with the grind. Okay, cool. I might look into that a little bit more. Uh, did you know? uh, oh, anyway, two hours, five minutes. Yeah, we better start wrapping this up. So uh, <laughs> it, it always goes to two hours, but I always enjoy these ones. They're good fun. Yeah. But it's later for me than it is for you. So Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was, uh... But uh, cheers to the list, actually. This is good to actually talk, not like stupidly harshly about these, but maybe just doing a slightly less positive list. I think it's kind of refreshing. <laughs> Right, because as sure. well, I think most of mine have been positive, and I can't think of any negative ones I'm doing in the near future. So it's like, ah, oh, phew, we can do this one. <laughs> uh, that's funny. But, yeah, nah. well, not, well, I originally I was gonna do the top six, right? But then uh, Mark had already grabbed it. The the top ten for six players. Oh, the six player one. Yeah, so yeah, Mark yeah, grabbed yeah. that one. But uh, yeah. like, you got a blight tattoo. What's what's this about? <laughs> No, I don't. But it's not a terrible idea. <laughs> Dude, oh my gosh. I was like, it's six months away, but the next expansion for Spirit Island is going to be awesome. <laughs> well, I say, I'm going to, I say, I'm going to, you know, totally be playing more Spirit Island. But the thing yeah. is, Spirit Island's coming out with content quite infrequently. And oh, yeah, honest, when I got beautiful. into Spirit Island, I bought everything that there was at, well, uh, I say bought greater than games yeah, gave me it, yeah, but yeah, the, you awesome. know, I got it all at once. <laughs> Dude, so one. greater than games, I, I. I'm like, I love that as a company. It is what it is. I'm like some small YouTube dude. It is, I get it. But they literally just reached out to me and asked if I wanted the review copy of Jagged Earth, and I was like, uh... <laughs> do it. You haven't got it. I mean, I, of course got I it. have it. Yeah. And I was like, I'll set up a giveaway, like. 
whatever you want to do. <laughs> uh, they're a bit late to the party, but I mean, let's say they got in touch Jesus. and we're going on that. And if all goes well, I'll be actually helping them out at Essen this year. That's great. That's great. I'm, I'm in the point now where I don't need the time at the convention as much as much right. as much as I used to because you can go in earlier as an exhibitor. So you get all your buying done ahead of time. And then you realize, well, you know what? Why don't I just make the trip a little bit cheaper for myself and help out teach games? Right. I did it with Portal before. I've done it with others. And this oh, year, great. hopefully, I can do it with Greater Than Games. And if so, that means I can just spend you know, a good day and a half at Essen teaching Spirit Island and Sentinels in the Multiverse. Can I ask for anything oh, better? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's heaven for you, man. That's great. Ah, that that's would be awesome. good. Um, I don't tend to play Marvel Champions more than solo or two-handed, i got to admit. Yes, I know what you mean about four-handed stuff, but... That would be quite cool. Anyways, nah. Say cheers for everyone coming on the stream. We got to, we actually peaked at a hundred at one point, which is actually good going for a stream. So clearly, clearly they followed you. So yeah, <laughs> all up? they want to know that. And no, this wasn't just top ten deck builders we don't like. I, mean, <laughs> I had I had a couple, but I mean, Dune Imperium, I suppose. Yeah, hybrid. What else do I have? Uh, Smash Up's not a deck builder. Legendary, yes. I think that was it. I think that was it for me. You had more than those. <laughs> no, I had, well, I mean, Dominion and Aeon's End, and then like different kind yeah. of. I mean, you can deck builder so broad, but like, yeah, the the bots were weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the. That's the first time bots have entered a live chat, so I don't yeah. know if it's just a thing. Oh, hey, hey, on cue. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if somebody's actually in the chat just trolling at this. Point. <laughs> um, could it could well be, but that that's great. it. Well, I'll do it on my I'll do my best <laughs> to cancel them out, but I think I think I might have to just take James's advice and say and just make the live chat subscriber on it. <laughs> yeah. Summoned, summoned it. Summoned is such a great word. <laughs> That's how it were, but maybe I'll take James's advice. I mean I mean maybe it'll get more subscribers. I don't know. I just hate the idea of forcing people to do it, but we'll see. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we better wrap this up before it gets out too long. So yeah, cheers, Greg, for coming on. <laughs> so just yeah, thanks for having me. Laugh. We'll, we'll say, well, well, it won't be the last. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I need to do more of these collabs. So I'm sure we'll come across more this to do. Maybe we can do a spirit. I don't know. I've already done a rated favorite spirits thing for Spirit Island. I don't know. Maybe we can think of something in the future. But yeah. further than that, just another top ten list. But now, nah, cheers for everyone for coming on to the stream. We'll catch you later. Remember. Go to Solo Playthroughs and have a look at his channel as, uh, I believe, uh, who said it earlier? Somebody said they were going to go find it. Yeah. All right, where was it? I can't find it now. <laughs> Someone said it, but yeah. By all means, go check out his channel, hashtag support creators. So take care, everyone, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Later. <laughs>